Is Mr. Hur already here? Join with us. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Ho, uh, she has uh, important uh, uh, another seminar and also oh, meeting okay. with the government. You yeah, join so again, uh, yeah. later he on. will join uh, right, later. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So shall we start? Uh, Mr. Pahansan, uh, let me uh, host the webinar uh, bilingually, okay? So sometimes I use Bahasa and sometimes I use English. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Professor Arif Satria, bisa mendengar saya, Pak? Belum ada respon dari Pak Arif Satria. Pak Arif Satria sudah bisa mendengar saya, Pak? Iya, Mbak. Oke, okay, baik. <clears throat> Oke, okay, welcome to join webinar in uh, of enhancing exotic seafood through sea farming development. Uh, this webinar is initiated by Center for Coastal and Marine Resources Studies in cooperation with Korea Indonesia Marine Technology Cooperation Research Center, coordinating Ministry of Maritime Affairs and also invest and investment and also IPB University. So, uh, honorable distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you all and welcome to our Zoom room for the opening uh, of the webinar. Uh, saya juga akan menyapa beberapa uh, tamu undangan. Pertama kepada Bapak Rektor uh, IPB University, Bapak Profesor Dr. Arif Satria, selamat datang. Kemudian kembali kepada Bapak Hansan Park, the co-director of uh, Korea Indonesia MTCRC, selamat datang. Bapak Muhammad Rahmat Mulyanda MR sebagai asisten deputi dari uh, pengembangan uh, perikanan uh, budidaya di Kemenko Marves, selamat datang. Kemudian juga Pak Associate Professor Dr. Ferdinand Yulianda, Dekan Fakultas Ilmu Perikanan dan Kelautan uh, di IPB University. Kemudian Pak Associate Professor Dr. Yon Fitner, Kepala PKSPL IPB University. Kemudian juga Associate Professor Dr. Aryo Damar dan juga Associate Professor Dr. Luki Adrianto. Kemudian, uh, also to recognize and welcome our uh, invited speakers today, Mr. Kim, Mr. Shin Kwon, uh, PhD, welcome. And also, uh, later on, will join us uh, Mr. Hur, Mr. Sung Pyo Hur, PhD. Ada Profesor Indra Jaya dari Fakultas Ilmu uh, uh, Kelautan dan Perikanan, juga selamat datang. Associate Professor Dr. Izal Effendi, kemudian all participants, semua yang hadir di sini, selamat datang. Nama saya Sinta Sininkias, saya akan menjadi host untuk sesi pembukaan webinar hari ini. Oke, okay, without further delay, we would like to invite the Rector of IPB University, Professor Arif Satria, for a welcome uh, remark. Please welcome Professor Arif Satria. Baik, terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yang saya hormati, Bapak Jody Mahardi, PLT Deputi Maritime Resource Coordinator to the Coordinating Ministry for Maritime Affairs and Investment, dan juga Pak Dekan Fakultas Perikanan dan Kelautan IPB, Pak Ferdinand, Pak Hansak Park, Co-Director of Korea Indonesia, kemudian juga Kepala PKSP IPB, Pak Yon Peter, kemudian juga Shin Kwon Kim, PhD, Dr. Rizaletun, dan juga Prof. Jaya, Pak Rukia Trianto, serta Pak Aryo Damar, dan hadir sekalian yang berbahagia. 
Alhamdulillah pada siang hari ini kita bisa kembali berjumpa dalam rangka untuk webinar Enhancing Exotic Seafood Through Sea Farming Development. Ini adalah acara yang menurut saya sangat penting dalam rangka untuk kerjasama antara PKSP LIPB dengan Marine Technology Cooperation Research Center MTHC Korea Indonesia dan Kementerian Koordinator Bidang Kemaritiman dan Investasi. Dan hari ini saya kira sangat penting sekali kita akan membahas berbagai isu yang berkaitan dengan kemaritiman dan saya kira isu ini akan terus berkembang karena kita melihat bahwa masa depan yang masa depan Indonesia ini akan sangat tergantung pada sektor-sektor agromaritim. Nah kita saat ini sedang berada dalam satu era di mana era ini membutuhkan percepatan transformasi uh, teknologi dan teknologi sekarang yang harus dipercepat adalah teknologi yang berbasis pada 4.0. Nah, karena itu PKSPL IPB dan juga FPK IPB uh, terus berusaha untuk semaksimal mungkin melakukan upaya-upaya akselerasi proses transformasi tersebut dan semoga uh, ini bisa diterapkan dalam berbagai aktivitas khususnya di sea farming. Karena sea farming yang telah dikembangkan oleh PKSPL IPB ini adalah salah satu etalase yang sangat penting sekali untuk bisa mengkombinasikan antara kegiatan perikanan tangkap dengan kegiatan marine culture, di mana kita mencoba untuk memanfaatkan aspek siskip yang ada yang ada di wilayah Pulau Seribu. Apa yang dilakukan oleh PKSB ini sudah merupakan satu satu apa namanya konsep pengelolaan perikanan dangkal dan juga bersifat community base dan fokus pada pengembangan budaya laut, perikanan tangkap, dan sekaligus wisata bahari, dan environmental management. Oleh karena itu, ini perlu sentuhan, sentuhan teknologi yang lebih advance, ya. dan bagaimana yang paling penting lagi, proses percepatan yang bisa melibatkan masyarakat. Karena kita tahu masyarakat dalam uh, seringkali selalu diasosiasikan dengan dengan belum uh, belum canggihnya teknologi, namun saya yakin sebenarnya masyarakat pun adalah orang-orang yang tergorong pembelajar. Jadi kita siapkan masyarakat sebagai seorang pembelajaran yang cepat, kita semua juga sebagai pembelajaran yang cepat, sehingga kita bisa merespons berbagai perubahan dengan langkah-langkah yang cepat. Oleh karena itu, saya berharap bahwa kegiatan ini bisa terus berlangsung, terus berkembang di lapangan, dan kegiatan produksi marine culture pun kita harapkan bisa dengan sistem instrumentasi yang terintegrasi dan otomatis, ya, mulai dari pemilihan lokasi, di desain rancang wadah budidaya, penebaran benih, pemberian pakan, manajemen kualitas air, penanganan hama dan penyakit, sampel ikan, pemanenan, penanganan pasca panen, dan pemasaran. Dan ini saya kira perlu segera dilengkapi dengan aplikasi teknologi yang yang lebih modern berbasis pada 4.0. Demikian saya kira sambutan saya, dan sekali lagi terima kasih pada Bapak-Ibu sekalian, para pembicara semuanya, dan semoga sukses acaranya. Dan saya Heri, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih Pak Prof. Arief Satria for your welcome remark. Berikutnya kita akan dengarkan opening speech yang akan disampaikan oleh Bapak Muhammad Rahmat Mulyanda, Asisten Deputi dari Pengembangan Perikanan Budidaya dari Kemenko Marves, Pak Rahmat, time and zoom room is yours. Ya, terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera, salam sehat kepada kita semua. Semoga kita diberikan kesehatan yang prima untuk menasihkan tugas-tugas kita yang semakin berat di akhir tahun ini. Kami hormati uh, Pak, saya panggilnya Mas Rektor, Mas Arief Satria, Pak Rektor IPB. Kemudian uh, Pak Dekan, Pak Ferdinand, kemudian uh, sebentar saya cek satu-satu dari pihak MTCRC, Pak Hansan Pak, kemudian Sin Kuan Kim, kemudian Pak Song Song Pihor, ya, Ayung Hasio, kemudian uh, Pak Profesor Indra Jaya, guru-guru kami semua, Pak Prof Kirja, Pak Prof Rio Damar. Kemudian sahabat saya ini Mas Luki dan semua undangan saya hormati yang tidak bisa saya sebutkan satu demi satu. Mohon izin saya mewakili Pak Deputi, Pak Acting Deputi, Pak Jody Mahadi yang sekarang uh, 
tidak bisa hadir karena beliau sedang ada tugas mendampingi Pak Menko di London. Jadi kami beberapa tugas untuk menyampaikan opening speech ini untuk mewakili beliau tanpa merasa hormat. Mohon kepada para peserta audien yang kami banggakan, kami akan menyampaikan beberapa slide barangkali sebagai gambaran latar belakang kegiatan MTCRC dan bagaimana Kemenko Maritim berperan dalam kaitan ini. Silakan Mas Wahyu disampaikan. Jadi ini lanjutkan Mas. Indonesia and South Korea collaboration to develop coastal aquaculture. Jadi MTCRC ini merupakan kerjasama Indonesia Korea yang sudah diinisiasi sejak pertemuan Pak Jokowi dan Perdana Menteri Korea Selatan sejak tahun 2016. Ini berproses terus sampai 2016 ada opening ceremony untuk MTCRC ini. Ada Pak Luhut di sini fotonya sebagai yang uh, menteri yang bertanggung jawab untuk melit kegiatan MTCRC ini dari sudut dari perspektif ataupun dari sisi Indonesia-nya. Kemudian uh, dari Kementerian Kelautan Perikanan Korea juga sebagai salah satu uh, main aktornya di pihak Korea untuk bersama-sama membangun kolaborasi peningkatan kapasitas sains teknologi untuk bidang kelautan ini. Lanjutkan lagi, Mas Wahyu. Jadi program dan aktivitas MTCRC ini mengcover uh, the Joint Committee ya Indonesia Korea on Marine Science and Technology, kemudian ada bilateral maritime dialogue, ada joint workshop, ada joint research, community support, dan juga collaboration webinar MTCRC MAPIN. Jadi beberapa kegiatan besar yang dilaksanakan dalam kaitan kerjasama MTCRC ini. Lanjutkan lagi, Mas. Terakhir, pada tanggal 14 15 Oktober yang baru lalu, Pak Menko dan Pak Menteri Pertanian Kelautan Korea mengadakan bilateral dialog ya di uh, Hotel Mulia untuk mendiskusikan beberapa kerjasama ke depan diantaranya adalah pemerintah Indonesia akan memfokuskan pengembangan seaweed integrated seaweed industri di Maluku Tenggara sebagai salah satu lokus pengembangan seaweed di Indonesia secara terintegrasi dari hulu sampai hilir Memang kalau dalam topik ini mari kultur ini luasan cakupannya sangat lebar ya semua komoditas barangkali sangat beragam mulai dari ikan kemudian kerang-kerangan kemudian krustasi dan macam-macam jadi kita harus memilih yang mana yang mau kita fokuskan untuk kegiatan pengembangan mari kultur ini apalagi Korea memiliki kompetensi untuk pengembangan di bidang seaweed jadi untuk itulah kami bersama dengan pihak Korea akan menginisiasi pengembangan seaweed estate di Maluku Tenggara sebagai salah satu nanti pilot untuk kerjasama MTCRC ini. Lanjutkan lagi. Sebagai gambaran awal eh, untuk kita ya, barangkali ini sebagian sudah pernah lihat bagaimana di sini digambarkan potensi dan juga tingkat produksi sumber daya perikanan kelautan dari mulai capture fishes dan aquaculture. Kita perhatikan Merin ini baru mencapai angka Uh, utilisasi 17 persen. Angka produksinya 10,3 juta ton ini adalah kebanyakan rumput laut. Untuk itu, kenapa rumput laut merupakan bagian yang penting dalam, dalam kaitan pengembangan aquaculture ataupun juga marikultur di Indonesia. Kemudian selanjutnya masalah uh, tambak ataupun uh, berkis water ataupun kosa aquaculture menempati juga posisi yang penting untuk kita kembangkan bersama dengan Korea. Lanjut lagi Mas Wahyu. Dalam RPJMN, National Midterm Development Plan 2020-2024, disebutkan bahwa uh, rumput laut merupakan important aquaculture commodity. Jadi bagaimana rumput laut menjadi salah satu fokus untuk dikembangkan secara serius dan afirmatif di segi kebijakan. Karena merupakan prioritas dari nas nasional, uh, interes kebijakan nasional. Di sini disebutkan beberapa komunitas yang ditekankan adalah ada tilapia, catfish, bandeng, seaweed, sim, dan Pergaraman. Jadi ini dari sisi aquaculter eh, perspektifnya di RPJMN. Kita mentargetkan peningkatan target produksi dari 10,9 juta menjadi 12,3 juta ton untuk produksi dari seaweed. Harapan 2024 ini tercapai peningkatan 2 juta ton. Untuk itu barangkali dan kerjasama Korea ini kita harus mengambil banyak pelajaran bagaimana pengembangan marikultur khususnya seaweed untuk bisa kita tingkatkan kualitas budidayanya dan juga dari sisi produksi pengolahannya. Lanjutkan lagi, Mas Mahyu. Ini perhatikan bahwa proporsi rumput laut ini cukup uh, apa, besar ya dari sisi uh, ekspor. 
volume 22 persen, kemudian nilainya 7 persen. Ini merupakan acuan untuk kita bergerak bersama-sama tahun 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 ke depan untuk meningkatkan produktivitas rumput laut ini secara lebih baik lagi. Lanjutkan lagi. Bagaimana pentingnya kita mengembangkan rumput laut integrasi? Kita lihat bahwa harga rumput laut di tingkat pasaran dengan ekspor uh, rumput laut yang dikeringkan hanya patah harus memiliki kemampuan untuk mengolah rumput laut menjadi produk-produk uh, uh, turunan yang bernilai tambah tinggi. Inilah pentingnya kita mengembangkan industri rumput laut yang terintegrasi dari hulu sampai hilir secara uh, serius dan konsisten. Lanjutkan lagi, Mas. Sebagai gambaran juga, ini beberapa turunan daripada rumput laut yang bisa diproduksi, ini menunjukkan bahwa kita sebenarnya mampu untuk memastikan perturunan ini secara uh, skala industri yang uh, masif ya kita mungkin sekarang hanya sporadis pengembangannya, memang sudah ada namun tidak begitu terasa kebanyakan rumput laut kita masih diekspor secara kering ya, sehingga nilai tambahnya tidak ada, untuk itulah bagaimana nanti kita ke dengan Korea bisa mengembangkan uh, industri turunan rumput laut yang bernilai tambah tinggi dan juga memiliki uh, kompetitif advantage yang uh, memadai untuk bersaing di pasar global. Lanjutkan lagi. Sebagai kesimpulan, pertama, we need to acceleration of coastal aquaculture, development and sea farming through sustainable way is important to increase aquaculture production, the wealth of aquaculture farmer, and also economic benefit for all stakeholders. Seaweed is one important commodity to be improved. Integrated seaweed industry need to be developed from upstream into downstream. Korean experience in development seaweed industry is important to be learned. How to increase the added value and competitive advantage is important for Indonesian seaweed program. IPB is one of the universities with the best competencies in the field in the field of fisheries and marine, which has many innovations supported by Fakultas Perikanan Kelautan, DKSPL especially. So that's why MTSRC is one of the cooperation partners between Indonesia and Korea is a strategic partner who has role and contribution must be strengthened in research institution, education institution, including IPB. Terakhir, bagaimana kita memperkuat kerjasama yang baik antara IPB dan MTCRC, dan kita meluaskan kerjasama ini ke depan, jadi tidak hanya pada saat ini saja, semoga tahun-tahun ke depan kita bisa memperluas kerjasama antara IPB dan MTCRC ini atau dengan pihak Korea dalam kaitan pengembangan riset, pengembangan human resource development, ataupun juga teknologi transfer, dan riset dan juga berbagai kegiatan-kegiatan lain yang relevan untuk pengembangan akuakultur khususnya marikultur di Indonesia. Demikian kira-kira dari kami harapannya selamat mengikuti seminar ini webinar ini semoga teman-teman semua rekan-rekan semua Bapak Ibu yang memiliki concern besar untuk pengembangan seaweed ini bisa menyatukan langkah untuk kemajuan uh, industri rumput laut ke depan yang lebih kompetitif lagi dan kita lebih maju tidak hanya sekedar mengandalkan industri rumput laut yang hanya dikeringkan saja atau hanya sampai dengan semi karaginan saja. Jadi Korea adalah partner yang potensial untuk kita ambil pelajaran banyak. Terima kasih atas semuanya. Selamat webinar. Mohon maaf kalau saya ada kurang-kurangnya. Eru kalam. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Baik, terima kasih Pak Muhammad Rahmat Mulyanda for your opening speech. Oke, okay, next, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Ferdinand Yulianda, uh, Dekan dari Fakultas Perikanan Ilmu Kelautan IPB University. Uh, he will deliver a keynote speech. So, please welcome uh, Dr. Ferdinand Yulianda. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam. Uh, good day, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, ya, yang saya hormati Pak Rahmat Mulyanda, Asisten Deputi Pengembangan Perikanan Kementerian uh, Menko Kementerian Koordinator uh, Maritim dan Investasi. Yang saya hormat, Pak Rektor IPB Prof. Arif Satria, um, the, my yeah, which I respect ya, yeah, Pak Hansan Park, co-director of Korea Indonesia uh, MTCRC, 
Marine Technology Corporation Research Center, if I'm not wrong. And also, uh, Pak, Pak Kim, yeah. para speaker, um, Pak Prof. Indrajaya, um, yeah. Pak Mr. Hu, uh, Pak Izzal, ini. Dan audiens, ya, para hadirin, Bapak dan Ibu yang saya hormati. Saya izin uh, share uh, slide gitu ya. Um, so if I can choose, yeah, I prefer to, to present in Bahasa or English. I, I, I prefer in Bahasa, you know. but I have uh, prepared already a uh, slide in, in English. Uh, so sometimes I, I can uh, speak in Bahasa and sometimes in, in English. Okay. Pada kesempatan ini saya diminta tentang contribution, kontribusi PB or University dalam hal uh, percepatan industri maritim 4,0 dan salah satu ad, uh, strategi adaptasi terhadap kurikulum kita menggunakan pendekatan agile uh, ini okay. dengan pendekatan 6 skill ya pada abad ke-21 yang kalau kita bagi, terbagi dari tiga komponen, yaitu tentang foundational literacy, kompetensi, karakter, politis. Nah, dari tiga ini, kita coba mengadaptnya dalam bentuk kurikulum, kurikulum, akademik kurikulum of FPK IPB, ya, 4.0 di mana uh, profil pendidikan kita itu terdiri dari tiga komponen besar yaitu terkait dengan uh, excellent intellectual achievement in, yang terdiri dari pendekatan science and te technology atau iptek dan aplikasinya kemampuan analitik in analytical skill dan <tuh> uh, pola pikir ya ya yang dievaluasi. Nah, pada tuntutan abad ke-21 kompetensi abad 21 ini ada beberapa pendekatan yang perlu kita perbaiki dalam kurikulum itu terkait dengan communication skill ya teamwork atau collaboration skill kemudian interpersonal skill leadership skill ya ini yang kita dorong saat ini untuk mahasiswa yang uh, spesifik di angkatan 57 kita sudah mulai memetakannya melalui uh, uh, pemetaan uh, pada dasar mahasiswa sehingga kita akan dorong dia itu pada uh, memiliki kemampuan dasar itu di bidang akademik ataupun di bidang uh, entrepreneurial ataupun dengan bidang uh, sosial politik intinya sehingga di kompleks uh, problem solving ini salah satu strategi kita untuk memperkuat mahasiswa kita memiliki kemampuan dalam hal me uh, mengeksplor ilmu-ilmu uh, kompetensi yang dimiliki secara akademik di dalam dunia usaha dan dunia pekerjaan tadi. Nah, pada um, aspek yang terakhir itu adalah bagaimana kita membangun uh, ekosistem uh, dari uh, personal growth. Ya, ini memang satu kurikulum yang didesain untuk jangka panjang, lifelong learning ability, ya, sehingga ini menjadi proses pembelajaran terus-menerus uh, yang bisa dilakukan oleh mahasiswa pasca ya, alumni. Nah, dari sini kita men menurunkan konsep kurikulum, ya, yeah. construct the 
uh, curriculum we call the K2020 uh, yang terdiri dari tetap pada angka 144 kredit intinya di mana komponennya terbagi pada uh, generic kompetensi uh, foundational literacy ataupun yang kita sebut dengan uh, academic core course ya ini adalah mata kuliah uh, utama di dalam kompetensi keilmuan gitu. Kemudian ada in depth course ini biasanya di level yang uh, SKS yang terakhir dan pada capstone course atau KKNT kuliah kerja nyata atau fieldwork college ya ininya seminar maupun final project itu pada uh, porsi 16 persen atau 23 23 uh, kredit ini. Nah, hal yang baru di sini kita dorong adalah enrichment course uh, di mana 21 uh, kredit ini menjadi satu uh, uh, program untuk uh, stimulate the supporting kompetensi ininya di mana para mahasiswa di mengambil mata kuliah mata kuliah yang di luar dari program studi ini yang sebenarnya untuk tujuan memperkuat uh, kompetensi yang kita miliki. Nah pada program enrichment course itu le, salah satunya adalah program di student exchange ini ya. Nah di kita sudah masuk di dalam uh, iku maupun simaker yang pada posisi 2020 the faculty ya, punya uh, angka kurang lebih pada inbound uh, uh, ya yeah, student inbound and out, student outbound di sini sekitar 85 and 64 uh, person intinya pada tahun 2020 yang terekam di dalam uh, simaker kita intinya Nah, dengan kurikulum ini kita berusaha untuk menjawab beberapa permasalahan yang terkait dengan perikanan di mana fakulti harus memberikan kontribusi di sini. The national policy of fisheries development ya melalui through three main breakthrough ya from the Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries ya yeah, should be implemented properly based on a strong scientific studies of course so that the target can be realized ya yeah. nah, the three main uh, program are uh, increase in non tax state revenues atau kita sebut dengan uh, PNBP from subsector capture fisheries aquaculture development and the village uh, development of fresh water drink is water and marine aquaculture jadi tiga program utama inilah yang sebenarnya harus dijawab di fakultas perikanan intinya sehingga eh, fakultas perikanan dan kelautan uh, we have uh, to think what we have to do so we have a uh, three main as aspect uh, that we have to do in uh, faculty terutama satu the first is development with integrity integritas inspiration accountability honesty and independence the, the second is strengthening faculty as a research based university and with entrepreneurial characteristic And the third is increasing social responsibility, prosperity, and contributing to social welfare in society. Um, untuk menjawab permasalahan perikanan nasional, tentu saja mengintegrasikan ketiga uh, aspek tersebut intinya. Yeah dalam hal memberikan sumbangan pemikiran dari para guru besar, para dosen, dan juga salah satunya inovasi-inovasi yang dihasilkan oleh 
Fakultas Perikan. <coughs> so, pemikiran-pemikiran, the ideas of uh, Faculty of Fisheries Marine Science, uh, academic staff, dan juga kita memiliki 86 innovation from academic staff of faculty. Yeah. Dan yang terdiri dari enam uh, komponen, ininya mulai dari yang pertama, the first is about satellite technology for monitoring the marine monitor environment, second, development and utilization of Internet of Things, yeah, IoT, technology, and marine instrumentation can be used in capture fisheries. Yeah, the third, yeah, the future of fisheries depends heavily on developing analytics for big data. The fourth, effort to manage your fisheries resources in the bay are uh, focused on small scale fisheries and fishermen's catch collection industry. And the fish, aquaculture and future is required to produce higher productivity, efficient use of resources, and with a minimal environmental impact. And the last are development of utilization of technology from upstream to downstream related to the process of increased added value and product diversification. Uh -huh. diversification. Now, we are going to show you some uh, faculties uh, innovation. They are there are 86 innovation, but not all of them I can convey on this slide yeah, because of uh, the limited time. The, the innovation product uh, consists of uh, two kinds. Yeah. First is about the equipment innovation and the second is process product innovation. So we look at one by one. Yes, the first uh, innovation is from Professor Indrajaya, Hawis, and Madupa, and Muhammad Ipat. Uh, the tool tracking fish trail is for some species like fish, crab, lobster, etc., and is equipped with Fisher GM and Fisheries Electronic Reporting Software. This tool is suitable for small scale fisheries in industry. Design and develop the to support the seafood import monitoring uh, program. The next innovation we call the APTG in Bahasa we call the alat pengukur tinggi gelombang. Go tool yeah to wave height yeah. The APTG is used to measure wave height consists of two parts, namely solar panel, box panel, and sensor. Uh, this tool is portable, it's easy to carry, easy to operate, and data is stored in memory. This tool is designed by uh, Indra Jaya, Agung Tridugroho, and Muhammad Iqbal. Another uh, innovation is called the underwater televisual uh, system ini alat untuk memonitor um, biota dan ekosistem ya saya percepat karena ini cukup banyak ininya ini juga ada beberapa motiwali mobile tight water level ininya uh, <tuh> juga dari Pak Indra Pak Indra ini banyak sekali ya inovasinya yang uh, sudah dihasilkan jadi Kemudian, I continue with the AUV, Autonomous Underwater Vehicle. This kind of a robot that is intended to observe object of or process that occur in the water or the bottom of the, of the water. Jadi ini dioperasikan dengan wireless, 
yeah, without power supply and electricity via kabel. Yeah. Meskipun while in the water, the movement of the the robot gets its power from the battery, and like other autonomous vehicle, the robot can be programmed to carry out certain mission. And of course, according to the sensor and manipulator embedded in the vehicle. The next uh, is Ocentec microcontroller based electronic fish tech designed with a radio frequency identification sensor for identification of marine organism uh, population. Ini adalah untuk memonitor biota yang, uh, yang bergerak. Ya. Dan ini sangat uh, baik sekali. Ya dihasilkan oleh Pak Hawis dan teman-teman. So, another uh, innovation is satellite remote sensing technology for optimizing the marine and fisheries industry in Indonesia from Professor Johnson. Next is still this innovation from uh, by Professor Bambang, we did do. This, we move to the practice uh, water uh, ponds, yeah, tambak, itu, yeah. teknologi biocrate, itu, yeah. ini menggunakan habitat pasir yang bisa dimanfaatkan untuk uh, pengelolaan tambak dengan uh, produksi yang uh, optimal. Itu, yeah. Fetal remediation of organic and inorganic waste water using floating wetland ini untuk pengolahan uh, limbah uh, lingkungan yang memiliki tingkat pencemaran. Nah ini bisa mereduce uh, limbah dari Prof. Hef ini. Nah. nah, kita masuk ke inovasi produknya product innovation the first product is uh, we call this as our greg yeah. this kind of rest uh, from yeah from uh, yeah may be made from natural ingredient from the indonesian sea yeah good for uh, natural diabetes prevention uh, The in vivo test results show the SR gag reduce blood uh, glucose uh, level and on the immune immunohistochemical uh, picture that there was an improvement in pancreatic beta cell that is good for the diabetes. Another one is about uh, surimi powder. This Surimi flour of powder is also myofibril concentrate that can provide elastic gel properties in processed products so that the use of BTP in processed food product can be avoided. Another product is about the phytosteroid as a reproductive stimulant of hermaphrodite fish. Ini untuk uh, the stimulant for sexual development and production of hermaphrodite untuk ikan-ikan hermaphrodite ini ini diturunkan dari uh, the local wisdom uh, dari <coughs> Papua intinya intinya red fruit dan javanese chili ini salah satu inovasi yang untuk me mempercepat proses reproduksi pada ikan hermaphrodite Another product is called Kegemi salt, garam dari rumput laut. Ini produk. Gemi salt is a low sodium high potassium salt derived from Indonesian seaweed. And also salgati, this kind of drink. 
contains uh, various active components, including phenolic compound, tannin, alkaloid, and terpenoids, which are useful as antioxidant and can lower blood cholesterol. It's another kind of so, uh, rabi, uh, purple seaweed and sweet potato powder, dan juga bentuk uh, minuman lain, ini, ya. yang kita sebut dengan boba seaweed. Okay, next is about the ini adalah produk-produk kosmetik yang uh, dari berbagai para inovator di sini. Ya, yeah. fish gelatin, mask, blackhead, uh, lifter. Gitu. For facial treatment made from red, yeah, red and brown seaweed pulp. Ini, yeah. something like uh, uh, lip balm. Ini hand body, hand body, and also for uh, uh, seaweed. For max, ya, intinya masker. We have also the, the serum, collagen face uh, serum, in the, and also the functional food emulsion based on tuna ice, where virgin fish oil and wood fish protein hydrolyzed with mixture design statistic. In the, Another one is about the red and white halal capsule from this uh, uh, gelatin. Capsule are used as a medium for uh, storing drug. Yeah. Capsule are made of gelatin made uh, for, uh, from pork and beef skin and bones in generally. But currently, it is uh, reported that Indonesia obtain almost all of its gelatin from import, where on the other hand, the halal aspect is clear. There is uh, red and white capsule innovation and so doubt about the halalness by optimizing the utilization of byproduct from the fishing industry. Jadi, yang terkait halala daripada fungsi gelatin. And the last is about the Vita Dukosa emulsion. Yeah. It's a product based on tuna eye virgin fish oil, which uh, is protected by antioxidant from kayu secang. Ini, ini tuna eye virgin fish oil is in rich, ya, kaya dengan LC omega-3 Dukosa hexanoic acid Ya, ya sampai 38 uh, persen ini. Jadi produk ini di uh, formulasikan dengan by ensuring that the omega 3 fatty acid content of the its DHA can meet daily intake the, the of a pregnant uh, ibu hamil maupun yang menyusui yeah, as an effort to prevent uh, Sorry. To prevent the decline, yeah, in children' cognitive abilities due to stunting, the kita banyak kita temukan di Indonesia. Okay, thank you very much. That's all that I can so uh, uh, and uh, tell. Uh, kepada Bapak dan Ibu yang saya hormati. Terima kasih. Wabillahi taufiq. Udaya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you very much, Associate Professor Dr. Ferdinand Yulianda for your keynote speech. Next, uh, <coughs> we will hear from Dr. Hansan Park. He is the co-director of the MTCRC. Uh, Mr. Hansan Park will deliver also a keynote speech. Please welcome Dr. Hansan Park.
Mr. Hassan, are you are still in mute? Can you unmute the microphone? Hansan, you are still mute? Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay <laughs> yeah. good. Okay, yeah, very uh, good afternoon, everyone. And I'm very pleased to yeah, uh, have a chance to present uh, about uh, MTC and also cooperation plan for seed farming. And yeah, uh, my presentation is just based on the MTC uh, introduction first, and then I want to share about the uh, uh, cooperation plan uh, about uh, yeah, uh, seed farming, just in my uh, opinion. And yeah, my presentation uh, contains like this. First, I would like to uh, show up the, uh, how long we have had the uh, uh, cooperative history between Indonesia. Uh, our cooperation was start, uh, of course, uh, there was more, uh, uh, more uh, earlier cooperation between two, between our researchers. Uh, between two countries, uh, Kyoto and also uh, North, and yeah, many uh, researchers uh, have a cooperative uh, research, and uh, especially between two uh, agencies, I mean Kyoto and Itebe, uh, we start uh, cooperation project 2010 and 11 about the Jakarta land substance uh, matter, and uh, we have a uh, uh, plan to establish the center and then uh, hope uh, opportunity uh, to government, uh, I mean, Korea and Indonesia have uh, uh, MOU uh, between marine sectors uh, cooperation. So finally, uh, 2018, uh, September, we established the MTCRC in uh, Chiribon Itebe uh, campus. And uh, we are into, into government joint research center and then uh, to conduct agency from Korea side is Kyost, Korea Institute of Ocean Science and Technology, and Indonesia side is a Technology University of Indonesia. And we have a co-director system uh, from Korea side, me, and Indonesia side, uh, uh, Ibu Ibon, uh, uh, Raja Wane. And uh, we have a total uh, 16 steps, also including we have uh, a research intern, so total to about 20. And the Korea side uh, operate uh, with budget and also Indonesia side uh, support uh, uh, space and facilities. And now we, our uh, center is placed in Chirobon actually. And then uh, we also have a Jakarta office in coordinating Ministry of uh, Maritime Affairs and Investment. Uh, so it is very uh, important to, to co work with the government and stakeholders in Indonesia and Korea. And we have an uh, uh, intergovernmental joint commission uh, to talk, to discuss about important thing of MTC and also marine science and technology. And we have uh, three department, uh, planning administration, research and technology and education training. And especially we have also advisory board. Uh, the advisory board is start uh, just uh, last uh, month officially. And we have uh, uh, five advisor member, uh, Papa Sapri, uh, former deputy minister of CMMAI, and Professor Safan, Professor Titri, Professor Widodo, and Professor Jainar. So they are all uh, uh, member of uh, advisor board and they will give uh, advisor to uh, cooperate with uh, two uh, countries and also uh, will have a uh, yeah, direction for MTHIC. Yeah, and uh, we have a uh, major three activity and additional two activity. Yeah, uh, first uh, activity is a cooperation platform and joint research conduction and capacity building program you know, operation. And also we have additional project implementation function. Uh, we conduct uh, OD project and also ICR project. And also next year, we will start a new project on ocean satellite. And also we have a role for support to local government and community. So just very briefly introduce the, our activity for cooperation platform. Yeah, of course there is many uh, event between two uh, government meeting and also uh, ISOE uh, kind of uh, 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 scholar meeting and also stakeholders meeting. 
Uh, and uh, we have a uh, uh, major four joint research topic. Uh, first one is about the uh, Operation Ocean Focus System uh, development. Uh, yeah, we know where uh, BMK also have uh, that kind of uh, uh, system. So we hope uh, uh, can support uh, uh, technical thing to them uh, to operate well about this uh, system. And also we studied about the uh, ocean satellite calibration based station operation. So this project is uh, yeah, developed to new project. And I already mentioned that the project will start next year. And ocean energy department uh, development uh, is uh, yeah, uh, suggested from Indonesian government uh, and also marine debris management. And we will have a uh, yeah, uh, master plan uh, in this year. And about capacity building activity, we already have uh, seven uh, uh, capacity building courses. Uh, so upper part is long-term expert courses, uh, which will provide, uh, which will uh, give a uh, uh, degree. So we already cooperate with uh, ITEBE. So uh, total 53 students per year uh, was were uh, supported by this program. And three students uh, uh, for doctoral program, uh, they already study in Korea now. And one Korea invited master uh, students also uh, studied in Korea. So we hope uh, extend this uh, cooperative uh, uh, capacity building to uh, the also, yeah, joined with the uh, IPB and uh, more widened to the other university in Indonesia. And uh, role part is about the uh, skill training courses. So we will give a certificate, uh, but it also very useful for uh, to cooperate and also enhance uh, capability for Indonesia young researchers and students. And yeah, unfortunately, yeah, you know, capacity building program, uh, actually the field, uh, field uh, training program is um, uh, very important for uh, training program, but uh, COVID, by COVID-19, we could not conduct well. So we just uh, have uh, online uh, program. Yeah, so many uh, Korean scientists and researchers joined to give uh, uh, on, in online lectures, uh, and also we ha we had a secret training program in online. But uh, we have uh, finished uh, this COVID nineteen situation, and uh, uh, soon we will continue. We will restart uh, offline uh, online uh, offline uh, equipment training program in German Center. And local community support, uh, yeah, we uh, we done uh, we did the co uh, children co coastal cleanup campaign, and we will continue in this. And uh, I would like to just introduce a uh, major achievement. Uh, first one is I already explained uh, that is uh, ocean satellite project. Yeah, so uh, by our joint research with uh, uh, Itebe, and also supported by CMMAI. And we successfully uh, submit a uh, proposal uh, to Korea government uh, 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 entitled with establishment of, establishment of application system for managing Indonesian water using Korea geostation satellite. It's a size of about 5 million US, US dollar and the five years uh, period. So it will be uh, launched next year. I hope we uh, can uh, have a good cooperation about this uh, ocean satellite. And next is about the ICRG uh, survey. Uh, it is uh, officially suggested from Indonesian government. And so uh, this year she uh, conduct uh, uh, ocean environmental survey using our equipment and also our researchers. So Araboat and the multiple eco sounders, CTD and SBP is used for this uh, survey. So uh, Indonesian government recognize uh, MTCI is uh, actual active uh, research center using uh, capability to survey ourselves. So we will continue this project. Uh, I mean, uh, after yeah, COVID-19 situation. Yeah, so it will, uh, we will continue this uh, survey and we will, uh, we can secure the enough data uh, year by year, so it is very essential data to analyze the environment impact or something kind of uh, fisheries potential uh, estimation like that. 
And Sri Vijaya uh, activity, you, we know well, so that is very sad accident and uh, MT Shashi can support uh, to uh, find out something object under the sea. Yeah, it's kind of a SAR activity. Yeah. And also for local government, uh, we surveyed uh, uh, ocean status and also mangrove uh, status in Chilogon area. So there is a kind of a supporting for our local government with uh, Itebe and also uh, Papari Bangda in Chilbon. And I would like to introduce some equipment, uh, our boat, it's a 12 uh, passengers and 12 meters lengths. And we have a uh, multiple Meko sounder and grab sampler and uh, SPP and drone for coastal survey and RTK DGNSS for very precise uh, 3D dimensional coordinating obtain equipment and CTD, you know where, and high performance server and two of car and 10 computer for training and plotter and software. And this year we also have a plan to uh, establish, uh, uh, make a marine chemistry laboratory, including nutrient auto analyzer and heavy metal analyzer and FTIR spectrometer for microplastic and the full marine survey ADCP and guide the uh, tide gaze and the weather station and also uh, hyperspectral radiometers for RS remote sensing on the rising. So based on this uh, activity, we already get uh, some yeah, award from uh, Korea embassy. Yep. And I want to talk about yeah, sea farming cooperation plan. Yep. So that is important for today's uh, seminar. Uh, basically, uh, MTC has uh, main four functions, I, and also we want to be a good facilitator for international cooperation between two, co two countries. And also we will be a researcher and educator and support for local, local community and government. And uh, basically we have, uh, we are a research center, so we should be uh, the international research center in international uh, standard. Uh, to do this, this is a kind of a general, uh, uh, general future plan, uh, but uh, we should make a more specific things, uh, especially about uh, sea farming. So for that, uh, we uh, review the many news the paper and also articles and research, research paper. And we find out that there is a major three uh, issues in Indonesia. Uh, that is logistics. Actually, uh, it's uh, based on my personal experience. And when we move to the other place and also sending some equipment to the other area in Indonesia, yes, uh, transportation fee, logistic uh, cost is too much. Yeah. So that makes, uh, yeah, Indonesia, in the, that makes an uh, obstacle to improve. Uh, developed uh, countries and also sometimes uh, you know uh, Indonesia has a uh, uh, country so uh, uh, marine uh, navigation is very important for safety for uh, logistics uh, uh, between island yeah so uh, with things uh, MTC have to also support this kind this uh, logistic matter in in terms of technical and scientific things and environment, yeah, it is a very common. And also we know where about the problem in, in the world and also uh, not only also uh, Indonesia, I mean, uh, including marine debris. And we think uh, just we know where about marine debris, but about the, uh, the water pollution will, uh, will, will be uh, raised uh, uh, as a very big problem in Indonesia in the future. So we should prepare about that uh, and also secure the ability to increasing uh, react about that uh, issue. And uh, Indonesian government also have a very uh, important strategy and policy about the fisheries. And also this uh, uh, seminar also about that. Uh, so uh, fishery pot we should uh, research and support about the fishery potential and increasing the uh, productivity of uh, fisheries and uh, using many things. So we reviewed the um, uh, Indonesia uh, ocean policy and already mentioned uh, there is a sea tools policy and also a corridor of economic or something. And uh, this marine policy is uh, responsibility on uh, CMMAI. 
actually. So CMMI is a strategy plan is also very important to, to know the specific uh, plan and also strategical uh, approach way. So uh, uh, MTC uh, rise up the, some kind of, of, uh, of a future uh, research topic. So it is based on the world issue. Of course, uh, we you know the word climate change and also SDZ. So this these two uh, world is uh, words are yeah very yeah sometimes famous and important yeah, uh, for our uh, future. And and then uh, we review the national policy in Indonesia and also program. So that will be ecosystem, MSP, ocean energy, blue carbon and yeah, sea farming. And uh, we should link it with our, I mean, MTCIC's existed uh, project and facility that is uh, yeah, ocean chemical uh, chemistry rep. And also we will have, we will start the ocean uh, satellite project next year. And uh, we will continue ICRG. It is linked with ecosystem some, and also pollution something. And so future topic is uh, we, uh, uh, we list uh, four major future topics that is uh, operational ocean production system. It is uh, based, uh, basically linked with the logistics matter. And also, uh, that uh, based on numerical models, so it is basic, uh, give a uh, basic uh, data for environment and fisheries also. And uh, blue carbon is uh, linked with climate change and also blue carbon. Uh, so, mangrove and seagrass and coral reef research will be done will be uh, in the future and also ocean pollution I already mentioned uh, not only for marine debris uh, but also water pollution also important and it is very also uh, important for fisheries and last one is a smart aquaculture so uh, these smart aquaculture and ocean chemistry rep and sea farming is a major uh, uh, topic uh, linked with uh, related with uh, today's uh, uh, seminar and also i want to talk about them more uh, but uh, also we should know she we we, we should link to with also uh, ocean pollution and icis and satellite utilization uh, previous presentation uh, also mentioned uh, remote sensing technology is very important for indonesia and also increasing uh, fisheries technology uh, we yeah, MTC also uh, recognize that issue uh, because uh, yeah, the Indonesia is a very huge uh, country. Yeah, uh, so we cannot cover all of area by uh, direct survey. I mean, uh, we need the kind of remote sensing technology to monitor uh, environment and fisheries and pollution, something like that is a key uh, technology for uh, Indonesia, I think. Of course, we should also install some kind of uh, uh, ocean observation uh, station, uh, but uh, we also link the, uh, we also consider about that uh, remote sensing data is important. So uh, what can we do for uh, to our cooperation? Yeah, so uh, yeah, there is uh, many plan, uh, many good plan and also uh, many discussion, but I want to focus on the actual uh, things in terms of execution matter. Uh, so uh, our cooperation uh, start cooperation discussion started uh, this year, uh, but uh, we, we should start uh, some concrete uh, activity next year. Yeah, uh, just uh, the directory and, uh, uh, and uh, we need uh, more uh, uh, actual uh, cooperative uh, activity. So uh, first uh, thing is uh, we will make, uh, we will make, uh, we will develop a cooperative project yeah, and uh, that means is we secure the budget. Uh, basically, I, I would like to already uh, Rahmat uh, mentioned the uh, last uh, uh, this month, uh, mid of this month, uh, uh, Minister of Ocean Fishery Ministers visit Indonesia, and uh, Papa Luhut also mentioned uh, uh, aquaculture cooperation. So uh, it is not just uh, uh, talking. I mean, we will start uh, that kind of project. 
uh, in next year or uh, just uh, 2023, yeah. So that is a smart aquaculture for hatcheries. It is about uh, uh, fish, 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 uh, fishy aquaculture. So also we will focus on the high value, high added value uh, species and fisheries. Uh, we don't know yet, but we don't know yet uh, exactly, but the uh, industry government suggests to uh, Napoleon fish and also grouper, yeah. Uh, but uh, we, we will make more detailed uh, cooperative contents uh, based on the many uh, discussion opus. And also uh, Indonesian government suggests about the seaweed aquaculture in Kaya land. Uh, so empty uh, uh, she will start a field survey just uh, next week uh, for Kai Island. Uh, so uh, it will uh, this uh, uh, cooperative project will be prepared uh, uh, very detailed proposal first, uh, maybe just in a month or this year, and we will submit that proposal to uh, Korea government and Indonesia government just next year, early of next year, uh, and we can start something in next year or just uh, the 2023. So for that, uh, we need to uh, make a consensus about the, what we will cooperate. And also, yeah, that is contents based on need, uh, contents based on needs uh, for both sides, uh, Indonesian side and Korea side, we should also thinking about the mutual benefit and uh, based on appropriate technology. Uh, in this, yeah, uh, we, we can have a meeting uh, together, uh, but uh, COVID-19, we should have a uh, yeah, webinar. Yeah, but uh, soon uh, we can uh, visit uh, in, uh, Indonesia. I mean, uh, Korea researchers can visit Indonesia and also we have a, a offline seminar, it will be best. And uh, I would like to uh, emphasize uh, Ipebe, Boguro University, uh, Esper has uh, stations uh, in uh, yeah, coastal area, Anjo and Silver Island, and there's one more. So it is very strong point uh, for corporate and also we can make more specific things uh, yeah, in this project. And uh, the number three, uh, we should base on uh, good governance, uh, including yeah, Kakape, yeah, because the CMMA AI is a very good relationship with us, but we should uh, make a good cooperation with also Kakape. And if we need uh, some of the other uh, uh, pay or something, some more ministry also joined our project. And uh, important thing is uh, MOU between empty session and yeah, Bekes Bear Ipebe. Uh, so uh, it will be discussed uh, yeah, soon, and uh, we hope uh, finish that uh, proposal and then uh, no, no, uh, uh, dropped of uh, MOU and uh, we, we need to sign on that. Yeah, that will be good governance. So uh, in the last uh, uh, in, in, in wrapped uh, uh, side of slide, uh, so uh, Minister of uh, Ocean Fisher Korea and CMMA and Kakape, yeah, they will be uh, base of our uh, cooperation and uh, major agency will join and uh, we will continue uh, cooperation between empty shash and back as bear. So uh, I already mentioned seaweed estate uh, is already submitted, uh, uh, it is already important uh, national plan uh, in plan in Indonesia. So Kakape has a responsibility and also CMMA, I read this uh, uh, important to think important uh, plan so we we already make uh, some kind of a proposal it is just uh, on on developing but uh, 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 we will focus on krn but we do just uh, just the next week we will start uh, i already mentioned uh, we will have a field survey and uh, you continue conference survey uh, next year and feasible study will be continue for uh, uh, in next year. So uh, based on that uh, result, uh, we will make uh, uh, develop and conduct uh, uh, next project. Yeah, maybe four or five years project. And uh, for that, uh, uh, I would like to also uh, mention uh, 
the equipment is a very important to conduct uh, uh, actual survey. Of course, uh, Beckett Bear and also IPEB has a uh, very nice equipment. Uh, so uh, combine and uh, cooperate with uh, us, uh, we can uh, survey more area and more data and more high, high uh, uh, quality of data. So it will be based use based on research and also proposal. And also uh, capacity program will be based on our cooperation. Uh, this is already mentioned uh, last time. Uh, we will start a kind of a joint uh, capacity building program. So uh, basically we will, we have a plan to extend, expanding uh, to more university and also area in Indonesia. Just now we successfully uh, conduct a capacity building program with the IPEBE, IPEBE, uh, uh, Bandung University, uh, but the uh, next uh, step of our capacity building program will be spread to uh, each area of Indonesia. So we will assign the uh, uh, local university to cooperate with us, and uh, uh, we will have a more uh, large size of a big size of uh, uh, field survey training program. So IPEBE. Bogoro University will have also important role uh, to cover uh, marine science and also fisheries. Yeah, so uh, I hope for we can make a good program. Yeah, as soon as possible. And then, uh, yeah, uh, of course, uh, cooperation, uh, we need to uh, strengthen uh, governance uh, uh, cooperation yeah, with uh, the other university and also uh, research institution, especially about Burin. Yeah, Burin is a new uh, big uh, institution in Indonesia. So that is uh, my uh, presentation. And yeah, I hope uh, we make a specific and concrete uh, uh, activity, cooperative activity plan and proposal and project. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Pansan, for your keynote speech. Um, I see in the chat uh, room that we have uh, one question from uh, Ibu Yanti Juari. Uh, probably we will just keep it uh, for this moment and then we will uh, try to discuss it uh, during the panel presentation. Is it okay? So uh, it is very interesting for. Uh, Hansan and also Pa Ferdinand uh, to uh, inform us about the uh, either invention from the IPB University as well as what can uh, we collaborate together between the MTCRC and also from the university. So now we enter the panel presentation session and for our first uh, final presentation, um, Associate Professor Dr. Uh, Luke Adrianto will be the host. Uh, Dr. Luke Adrianto is the former of the uh, head of CCMRS. Uh, so Mr. Luke Adrianto, if you are already uh, ready, the presentation session is yours. Yes, thank you, uh, Mbak Sinto. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, selamat sore. Uh, all of the participants, the excellencies, the Dean of Faculty of Physics and Marine Science, uh, as a professor, uh, Fredin Lianda, uh, the distinguished uh, participants, the excellencies also, I think Pak Rector may be still here, Professor Adif Satria, the excellencies of the co-directors of uh, MTCRC, uh, Dr. Hassan Park and Dr. Uh, Yvonne Rajawani. Pak Yvonne. And also the uh, uh, distinguished uh, speakers, I think we have uh, two sessions or two panels with four uh, uh, speakers, but I would like to uh, 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 say to the first uh, two speakers, uh, Dr. Kim, uh, Dr. Singford Kim and Dr. Isal Effendi. Uh, my name is Luki Adrianto. I'm a senior uh, 
research uh, fellow in the Center for Coastal and Marine uh, Resource Studies or PKSPL uh, IPP and also the uh, associate professor in the Faculty of Physics and Marine Science under uh, the Department of Aquatic Resource Management in IBP universities. Uh, the distinguished participant, I think uh, with the two or three last slide of uh, Dr. Hassan Park, it is, it is very, very opportunities, uh, very, very in time with the, uh, it's not only uh, as distinguished uh, or excellent uh, my friend, uh, uh, assistant deputy of uh, Ministry of Coordinate, Coordinate Ministry of Maritime Manifestment, Pak Rahmat Mulyanda, regarding the importance of aquaculture for this country, but I think uh, this is also uh, in time and also uh, is very, very uh, strategic opportunity to, to keep in mind that our country is the largest uh, Arctic state, meaning that we have more sea than land, more aquatic ecosystem than land, but pr probably uh, uh, sharing with the Korea as also part of the maritime countries or maritime state, we can also improve our utilization of the uh, of the uh, uh, marine area. So in that regards, I would like to start this uh, first uh, panel session with inviting two preeminent scientists in, from the both uh, institution, MC, MCRC or Korean side and, and uh, Indonesian side uh, or RPB side. I would like to uh, introduce the first speaker, uh, Dr. Kim uh, uh, Sin Kwon. Dr. Kim is uh, actually now is the senior researcher of the and also manager of Aquaculture International Cooperation Team under the National Institute of Fisheries Science in Korea, and uh, he got a PhD from now actually Tumsat, yeah, right, uh, Dr. Kim uh, Konichiwa Anyoaseo, uh, I think, uh, with a two uh, greeting uh, from. Uh, to you and he also getting the msg from university the same university in 2002 and uh bsg from jeju uh, national university which is the small island i think right and i'm very very happy to uh, meet our colleagues from korea because uh, several times i go to I, I went to korea for some seminar including in the seoul national university last uh, several years ago with mc with, uh, uh, for example, uh, also the kiosk, Dr. Hassan, maybe uh, the senior one, the Dr. Subje Kim, the Subje Kwon, maybe still there or maybe already moved to other institution. Okay, and then second one, the second uh, speakers, can you come to Pa Irza? Uh, the second speaker is coming from Indonesian side, from IBB University, from Faculty of Physics and Marine Science and also from the Center for Coastal and Marine Studies. Uh, I think in IPP, we call him as Bapa Si Farming, yeah, or the father of sea farming. Uh, Dr. Isa Fendi is Associate Professor in Aquaculture uh, from Department of Aquaculture, Faculty of Marine Science, the universities. And he completed his PhD or doctoral program in IPP, as well as the Master of Science and uh, PhD also in, uh, from IPP. And two of these preeminent uh, speakers will share with us uh, each uh, in the context of uh, sustainable aquaculture. For example, the case of Dr. Kim, we talk about the sustainable aquacultures uh, and the future research, of course, in the context of National Institute of Fisheries Science in Korea. And, and then later on, Pa Irzel will share with us the recent development of integrated marine, marine, marine culture in the context of, of course, the sea farming program, uh, the program that has been uh, uh, developing uh, since 2004, and I'm personally also part of that in the context of preparing the uh, community and economic scale of the uh, sea farming. And uh, each of the speaker will be giving the presentation, maybe around 15 or to 20 minutes, or if you can, you can do less is, is much uh, appreciated. And after that, we will be followed with a, uh, a 20 or 25 minute discussion. For the first uh, session, I would like to invite Dr. Sin Kwon Kim to deliver the presentation on the sustainable aquaculture 
the future research in the National Institute of Physical Science. Dr. Kim, time is yours. Hello, my name is Shin Gong Kim. Thank you, Chair, for a good present and, uh, and uh, for uh, for uh, my my uh, today is our talk about uh, the sustainable aquaculture research in future by NIFS Korea. I work for NIFS National Institute of Fishery Science. That is the include of uh, mist of the ocean and fisheries. Uh, so this uh, NIF is uh, only just one uh, the institute, uh, National Institute for Fisheries. So today I uh, were talking about uh, this content. First time I will talk about the present state of Korean aquaculture. As you know, this is the uh, uh, trend, I'm sorry, trend in Korean fishery production. So if the catcher is uh, almost decreases in every year, but aquaculture production and increases every year. So in the future, the aquaculture industry very important in the future. So this is the story of aquaculture, Korea. In 1916, that time we uh, development to see with the culture look like labor. And second, in the 1918, that time so with the uh, development of the shellfish culture look like oyster. And then third time is 1919, and the we development of pinfish culture that is famous in the olive plunder that is famous in Korea. In the future, so we will develop high technology, integrate the aquaculture management and smart aquaculture. And this is Korean map that we have a three type of the sea that east, west, south. That is the area difference character uh, because the east sea is very simple coastline, deep sea there. And south sea is complex coastline and many island. All of the aquaculture production in you know, almost the south sea production in this area. And the west sea is a well developed Thailand. So but that character is different. So different species in aquacultures. In the main aquaculture, East Sea is Kalao, sub clam, and the starling plowder. In South Sea is the black rockfish, olive plum, the abalone, labor, sea mustard, oyster. And the West is the prawn or manila clam. So next time in the aquaculture and the method in Korea. That is very famous uh, pinfish is the Olbon plowder. That is culture method is tank culture. And then the production about one year, 43,000 metric ton. That is the only just one or one point uh, years for production of a commercial size. That is the inland aquaculture system and all the building and the in, inside of the building. Uh, next time is the uh, own second and the important pin fish is black lava fish, Korean black lava fish is the, that is usually use a neck cage pan. You can see the uh, this is a neck cage pan and uh, this production about 21,000 metric ton per year. Uh, this is neck cage pants time. This is a wood time. It a long time ago, so we used wood for make a neck cage pan. But in this case, the, we use a polypropylene, and that is very good uh, passivity because that is the anti-wave system. Next time is the shell pitch. That is the oyster, and oyster very popular oyster in the shell pitch, and the production about. Uh, Sorry, thousand metric ton per year, and then very famous is still. And this is oyster culture method in the South Sea, and that is the fifth production of the oyster process. And next on abalone, abalone is a very good, good price. One kilo about forty forty dollar fifty dollar, very expensive. So in this production per year twenty. Uh, thousand metric ton, and a very good 
and the oyster and the fish and uh, seafood. This is abalone cultured method in seed production and abalone uh, egg and spawn spawning, and then make uh, seed and production and the middle growth time in this and land scale aquaculture, and then move to the net cage pan that it, we use uh, for feed for uh, and uh, mustard or uh, seaweed. Uh, next is labor. Uh, labor is very famous as a seaweed in Korea and uh, 536 metric ton per year production. Uh, seaweed culture in Korea, first time is the uh, uh, seed production, seed culture in the March to May, and then shell transportation is June to 8, and the seed, seeding is the September and then growing in September to December and harvest in December, March. That means this species is cold world seaweed. So maybe this is different for in Indonesia, but I heard it, the Yukuma is very famous in seaweed in the Indonesia. I know it's a very high volume in the production in the Indonesia in the world. So I have some kind of cooperation with the Korean and the seaweed culture technology with the Indonesia. And next time I will and uh, introduce of the research of the NIFSS. And we are three party the first time and eco-friendly aquaculture technologies. Uh, this is a smart aquaculture system in the and uh, net cage pans. Uh, and uh, this is uh, some and uh, some picture. And uh, we and uh, this environmental measure in this is the, some equipment and sometimes this the monitoring for gross rate fishes underwater drone oyster monitoring to fish over neck cage pan state or a sonar sensor that is necessary for some monitoring the fish and uh, also in diet supply that is automatically and uh, we in the continuous um, feeding the diet. And this is all of data and collected. This is the fifth, our smart pitch palma management system. And then this data uh, send to the land. And we only control by the mobile phone or computer. Uh, this is a uh, uh, real and the facility for some and the smart aquaculture naked pants then you see the automatic diet supplier. Uh, also, we have four system that is the optimal diet supplier technology. Uh, that means the, we calculated uh, the feed volume for each kg. And then also with them uh, collected all of the data. And next uh, picture is the uh, monitoring for PC growth method technology. Only, by, only take, take a picture, we know how, long, uh, how growth uh, these species. And third is the water drone or palm check technology. Sometimes destroy the, the connectage pan that if the escape to all the fishes. Sometimes some some breaking disease breaking times that we also have to do monitoring inside of the water. Uh, fourth, next, uh, finally, is the culture environment control technology. So you can see the water temperature on the oxygen uh, and this is the, this of the oxygen or pH is that we automatically in the in the, in the measures all of the factor. And next time, this is inland and scale the smart aquaculture plants, the post water culture environmental control. That is the, all of the sensor. We use the sensor. We collected all of the and the environmental factor. And second is a smart diet supply system that is automatically they are all of the diet moved to the each is the tank. And third, uh, pump management robot. And uh, sometimes we use the, this robot, the monitoring over input, input uh, diet for each uh, the tank. 
And fourth is the remote monitoring and the control system. And that is the long distance that the place that we can all over the control and the system in the inland or naked pan. Yeah, this is a real smart aquaculture management control rooms. And then we all of the system and control this is monitor. And we can also monitoring this each, each the tank and also they calculate uh, every day the diet volume on so pH and uh, water temperature and the environment factor. Uh, next time I will introduce a bioflux system for fish, uh, I'm sorry, shrimp. And the uh, bioflux system is very complex. So uh, that, that is some, some very difficult. But this uh, uh, picture is very simple. I'm sorry. Uh, so time in the fish is consumed feed after that remain the packers and in uneated feed. And this feed is the remain in the water, but in the water is the heterotropic bacteria assimilation of the ammonia. And then and bacteria grow up and then bioplug formation. The, this bioplug also shrimp eat this bioplug material. That means the, this system no change were and the feeding is very small for use for growth species, uh, shrimp. Uh, this is a bioplug technology. Look like a very dirty, dirty water, but that is the bioplug system, not the dirty. Yeah. Next time, I will introduce the labor. Labor is the Korean bay good and the seaweed production. And then uh, this year, uh, K food labor export to over 500 million until this year. That very good export uh, material. So in NIFS, the world development with the labor and barrierities. So every time, so every year, so we uh, produce and, uh, uh, new species for new variety for more growth, good growth, or more residence disease and more good taste of the labor. Second time, you got high volume aquaculture species development technologies. First time in the bluefin tuna. As you know, the bluefin tuna is a very important species in, in, the, in the world, though also the endangered species. So in Korea and NIFS research about this uh, bluefin tuna aquaculture technology. So we succeeded with the egg production in 2015. Uh, the, this process is the first time we injection hormone to fish and then feeding time and spawning action monitoring after that and uh, collected the fertilization egg and check the fertilization egg and been transferred to egg. egg. Yeah, this fertilization egg after check larvae and the juvenile. So we grow up and the fluffy tuna. Next time, eel and the aquaculture technology. As you know, the eel also the dangerous species. So, but in the eel aquaculture, it, we all, all of the seed from the nature not artificial. So we uh, produce uh, the sperm and egg and make a fertilization egg and uh, have the hatchers. To, we uh, grow up until the last yield. Maybe Indonesia is the difference to, uh, and the eel look like angular bicola. That is, that is the, in the uh, tropical and eel species. So we try and then and make a second generation. But if that is our more purpose is the mass production of the glass seals for aquaculture. A third time interesting is competition technology of aquaculture. So first time, as, uh, as you know, with the olive cloud, a very important species aquaculture in Korea. So we and uh, uh, grows and I want to genetically improve the olive cloud by genetic or and uh, selective breeding path. That means the more path grows and then natural shape, good shape or more uh, good and uh, resistance and the disease species make our NIFS. Oh, uh, that means the berry path grows uh, olive powder and the excellent shape and have make a hybrid and the 
next generation at the also this time to ultra uh, maker next generation disease residents after that uh, finally we very good past and excellent shape and the disease residents in the olive powder production and production and every day every year next time is the olive uh, abalone abalone is a very high volume and good price so we'll in the uh, breeding research, the selecting or genetic breeding. So, so over 30 percent berry path to growth and uh, will abolish development in Korea. Next time is the grouper. Uh, and you know, in the giant grouper, it usually exists in, in the East Asia, East South Asia. In Korean, we have more uh, is three species of grouper. But this is a three species the grouper is very typical to aquaculture and very slow past and slow growth. So we uh, make a hybrid and the giant grouper and long tooth, giant grouper, red spot, giant grouper, tiger. That times so with three species is a hybrid of the grouper. This grouper usually and the tiger grouper and giant grouper in the, this hybrid grouper is very past growth and very good uh, readiness to the disease and uh, very good taste. So in this case, the, as you know, is the uh, earthworm that every time the water temperature is increases every year. So in sometimes we need more high temperature species. So this species is used for in the future for in Korean and aquaculture. Uh, next time diet. Uh, this is uh, uh, very good, uh, some problem in Korea. In all of aquaculture farm use for a low fish or a moisture pellet. But this is uh, method uh, is some kind of problem. Uh, first one, environment pollution. That means the EP is very good for pollution. But this uh, moisture pellet or low fish is uh, some kind of uh, some problem for in the water quality. Uh, next day, the, this small size fish is uh, in the nature resource in the experimentation. That means uh, this is small size and not consumed by human. So we use for feed, but this is a uh, small size fish to, uh, in, the, in the water that is more good after that grow up in the, in the big side that we consume to buy human. The rights of our labor, also certainly the rice is labor and the equipment cost. That means we need some the refrigerator, some kind of cutting machine, and the, the labor is very necessary for it's an MP or the low fishes. So in now uh, you can see it the before feeding and after feeding. The work condition is not so good for after after feeding times. But EP diet is very clean compared with uh, moisture and uh, pellet. So this is uh, MP diet, the moisture pellet diet, and this is low fish. But we have to change this all of aquaculture palm in EP the diet. So EP diet machine uh, with this uh, very big size uh, and diet machine. And uh, EP is processing in the first time we mix it all of the material of the diet and the grinding after the exclusion, the high temperature and high press. And then and dry in this machine and the coating by oil and the clean and packing. That is only just 10% under the and the moisture. Next time is the vaccine. Uh, as you know, it's a common case. And the by our vaccine development, the, the antibiotics, the volume is uh, decreasing. So that means the vaccine is very important for some, some disease control. So in Korea, in the olive plow and the development of this vaccine, and then we and uh, injection the fish and then and check the antibiotic analysis, and then we and the research about the vaccine development. So at uh, fine time, we will talk about Korean aquaculture priority, and there uh, were simple uh, slide and the. Uh, in the aquaculture fishery, in only just a small size family scale, small size of the aquaculture palm. 
but in Korea, we changed the role, agriculture development and act that can, after that changes, the enterprise agriculture company can the, uh, control on the management of the big size agriculture farm and also permit of the company, uh, comp uh, company and per penetrate in the aquaculture industry and then indu induction of the investment to aquaculture industry. The second is the high technology smart aquaculture spread. That means uh, in this state that is by human um, power, but in the future, we need some kind of automatic or AI or ICT the technology for use for and the aquaculture system. So in now it NIFS it tries uh, this uh, development this technology. So and uh, propagation of the automatic aquaculture system, diet supplier monitoring or some kind of world control uh, system. And third is the eco-friendly disaster of prevention and aquaculture system. That means the management of aquaculture environment, uh, the mandatory EP diet or vaccine breeding technology is very good for in the future in Korea. Thank you very much. Uh, in this uh, times, uh, I hope to say the Indonesia is a uh, very good condition the aquaculture industry and the Korean is a very long history of the aquaculture. So in the country, two countries that have a cooperation with for about uh, uh, pin fish look like a grouper or some kind of Napoleon fish, the Dr. Bach had mentioned. Uh, also seaweed aquaculture or aquaculture in the food processing in the and uh, technology is a very good chance for uh, uh, cooperation in each other country. So I hope in the first time, first step, we need for know each other. That means the Indonesia scientist or some kind of governor get visit to Korea or Korea and the specialist visit to Indonesia. And they have uh, some kind of, they have a chance to the discussion about the, what kind of need for technology or what is differences. Is. So we need some, have a chance to know each other. So, um, uh, in Korea, we after our minister is the visit to Indonesia, we MOF, Minister of Ocean and Fisheries Science and Fisheries, is, uh, they uh, try to make uh, some uh, meeting for cooperation method with Indonesia. I hope sometime I hope in the visit to Indonesia and Bogor. Thank you very much for today's uh, presentation. Thank you, Thank Dr. You. Uh, Kim. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> it's very impressive. Uh, Presentation. I think we we, we open uh, your presentation opens our eyes to uh, give more opportunities in collaboration between Indonesian and Korea, especially within uh, MTCRC and uh, IB University. Of course, uh, in the aquaculture technology perspective, uh, we can have a, a more uh, exchange information, know each other. It's not from the university only, but maybe in the later on, we also will invite uh, all of the research institute that uh, uh, owned by the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Affairs and also the other university that I believe that Indonesian uh, side, we have uh, 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 strong enough, our capacity enough to collaborate with uh, Korea. And I think for this IPP university's perspective, uh, mm -hmm. the, the Dean, uh, Dr. Pedino Jenda and our, our, our boss, the director of the CCRMS, Dr. Jan Fittner are so here, will uh, catch up the opportunity of the collaboration from this first uh, workshop. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kim, for the uh, very uh, interesting presentation. And Thank you very much. Uh, yep, and uh, I hope you're still uh, with us uh, until the finish of the second presentation of Pak Irzal. And then after that, we will have some small discussion uh, with the participant. And uh, do, you, do you have something to say about that? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. So I have some next uh, the other meetings. So oh, I see. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, if you want some kind of question or some kind of need information, uh, this is an email, my email. So okay. you contact me. I uh, will and answer for about your uh, question. Okay. 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 Thank, thank you, you, Dr. Thank you. for that. Bye. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. And the participant, if you want to have a question to Dr. Kim, you can just chat the in the chat of this room. And then after that, we the Pekaspel will collect all of the uh, question to uh, Dr. Kim, and then we will send 
uh, to him. Yeah, Dr. Kim, uh, maybe after this, we can send the, all of the questions to you through email. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kim, and have a nice day. Okay, uh, distinguished participants, I would like to invite the second speakers uh, now from Indonesian side. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Isa Fendi, uh, senior researcher of CRMS IPP, as well as the associate professors in the Aquaculture Department uh, under the Faculty of Physics and Marine Science, IPP Universities. The presentation will be talk about the integrated mariculture development through the sea farming program <laughs> in Seribu Islands. Uh, Irza, time is yours. 15 to 20 minutes, yeah. Thank you, Pak Luki. Good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to uh, present about the development of marine culture through sea farming program with case study at uh, Seribu Island area. Indonesia has a, a long history of aquaculture since the 15th century and has become a significant contributor to global aquaculture production for both international and domestic markets. The area of Indonesian water is 4.40 million kilometers square, consisting of 5.8 million kilometers square of seawater zone and 0.55 million, million kilometers square of inland waters. So the country has a coastline of 100 egg. 108,000, the second longest in the world after Canada. Indonesia is the, an archipelago with uh, 17,000 islands, including both large and small islands. And the Indonesian waters have relatively warm and stable temperature all years, and with minimal occurrence of tropical cyclones allowing production to take place uh, continuously. Indonesia has a very large potential for aquaculture development for marine, breakage water, and freshwater aquaculture. The potential for aquaculture development is estimated at uh, 7.90 7 million hectares, consisting of 12.12 12 million hectares for marine culture and 2.96 million hectares for breakage waters and 2.83 million hectare for fresh waters. With human population of 173.5 million in 2020, and where fish consumption is 45, 44 kilograms per capita in 1918, the country has high market potential for aquaculture product. Indonesia is among the major aquaculture producing countries. The aquaculture productions of the country reached 5.4 million tons, which is around 6.60% of the world's aquaculture production in 2018. Indonesia is the third large aquaculture producer in the world after China and India. Mad culture is a marine fish production in control system with seawater as a rearing medium and take place in the land as land-based marine culture or in the ocean as water-based marine culture. In our perspective, marine culture is a part of sea farming program. This program was first launched in 2000 and five by the Center of Coastal and Marine Resource Studies, IPB University at the Seribu Island of Northern Jakarta. Sea farming is an integrated marine culture development program with hatchery development, fisheries and tourism, and marine tourism, with stress to technology development, business community empowerment, institution and marine environment conservation. So, 
the main goal of the sea farming program is to the empowerment of economic of coastal communities and small islands. In this program, marine culture development goes hand in hand by hatchery development. In our concept, hatchery production is an input for the marine culture system and also for restocking purposes. Various marine culture system and technology can be developed such as floating net cage, fixed net cage, pen culture, or submersible cage. Soon, we, PKSPL, will bring in the submersible cage for lobster as a form of research cooperation with PT Aquatic Indonesia the, in the Kedereka program of the Ministry of Education and Culture of Indonesia. The objective of restocking is to increase the stock of fish, commonly coral reef fish in the sea. This stock enhancement is to improve capture fisheries production performance. As we know, most of the population of the Seribu Islands are fishermen. The restocking activity conducted in the sea farming area and the fishermen catch the fish by under several regulation, such as using selective fishing gear, reporting fishing yield, and so on. To ensure the success of this uh, restocking, we must ensure that the condition of coral reef as homes for fish is in a good condition. Therefore, we must carry out coral reef rehabilitation activities in several sites. Coral reef that are in a good condition will certainly ensure the sustainability of marine tourism activities, such as diving, snorkeling, swimming, and so on. So by the sea farming program, we can develop welfare of the fish farmers, fishermen, and marine tourism services in an integrated manner to create the develop, to create the empowerment of economic of coastal communities and small islands. In Seribu Island, for example, and maybe at the many part of region of Indonesia, especially at the overfishing area with commonly as an area with strong market demand of seafood product. Sribu Islands is one of the administrative area of Jakarta where most of the area is the sea and only smart small part is land. This area has 111 islands with 14 of them as residential areas, while the rest are managed privately for commercial resort and private resort. Most of the people of the Seribu Island are fishermen of fishing road and throw for coral reef fish and small pelagic fish. And some of them are throw with fishing ground outside in the Seribu Island area. The local government has a vision to make the Seribu Island area as a field and garden of life for the welfare of the community and launch marine culture and tourism as a regional leading sector. Sea farming program is backgrounded by the fact that the waters of the Seribu Islands have been overfished. The stock of pelagic fish, the marshal fish, and reef fish in these waters have been greatly reduced so that the catch of the fishermen is not sufficient for their living needs, even to cover the operational cost of fishing. The Seribu Islands are very close to Jakarta, which has a very high demand for seafood. This has resulted in the high intensity of captured fisheries in the area, even using the attractive fishing way. In addition, the local communities need for sand and coral for construction of housing and public facilities has caused damage to coral reefs and decreased water quality. The absence of alternative livelihood in the sea, apart from fishing, has resulted in continued pressure on conservation of coral reefs. So it needs to convert 
fishermen to fish farmers. The sea farming program has succeeded in turning most fishermen into fish farmers. The number of fish farmers in 2005, before the program was implemented, was at 11 people. Then it increased to 140 uh, people in 2010. And at present, hundreds of people on Sribu Islands depend on the fish farming in the sea. Although not all of them become successful fish farmers. The Seribu Island are the main supplier of grouper fish for Jakarta and its surrounding cities. This program has also succeeded in changing the general view that a revolving loan that has been never rolled out is now truly revolving and sustainable. The sea farming program has been replicated, replicated in other areas in Indonesia such as in the Nasik Strait, Belitung Islands, Bangka Belitung Province, and Kau Islands, North Halmahera, North Maluku Province. The sea farming program has received copyright recognition from the Ministry of Law and Human Rights Republic of Indonesia in 2018. The sea farming program includes training, piloting, testing, uh, uh, piloting, mentoring for local communities in utilizing the sea for seafood production, especially grower. The training includes mental, technical, and management aspect with the training material consisting of hatchery and marine culture, agribusiness, entrepreneurship, group and business institution, and marine conservation, marine technology, including seed technology, feed, te feed and feeding, Field management, water quality management, harvesting, and harvest technology have been implemented in the uh, sea farming of uh, Seribu Island. The training structure come from the universities and are some from entrepreneurs. The training method is Andre Joji, which is training for adults that is directed to help solve business problem and the daily life participant. The training provide is in the form of, of in-class lecturers, demonstration, practical exercise, and field visit. Pilot farming is carried out to demonstrate the training participant that why they have received the training, as well as to develop appropriate technology. Demonstration farm are we are given to participants in this activity based on the principle of seeing is believing thus facilitating the, pro the process of technology dissemination and business management to participants. This pilot or demonstration farm was carried out in special unit of production unit belonging to the trading participant other than sea farming uh, center facilities. The development technology is carried out through action research activities covering the theme of marine culture, coral reef conservation, capture fisheries, social culture and institutional, bioeconomic, and so on. So the development of main culture technology and management is carried out in conjunction with the pilot health in the program. Marine culture research include applied research, farming research, or production scale research that can drive, directly solve technical problems in the field related to seed, feed, water quality, fish disease, and health, cage engineering, and production management. Several marine culture technology that be developed is herbal substance for fish health management, smart automatic feeder, and using the underwater camera for observing fish behavior and presence. Most of the program participants had no experience in fish farming. During the pilot period, assistance or mentoring was provided by field facilitators, including technical, production management, business management, business recording, and bookkeeping. This field facilitator resided in the fish farmer location and can be assessed by participants for 24 hours in addition to visiting each participant regularly. They also conducted seed nurseries for participants at the seed farming centers 
and facilitate group meeting. They also act as a liaison between program participants and experts from both university and entrepreneurs. The pilot carried out in the participant production unit use the group loan financing scheme, the financial assistance scheme provided by the government and companies to fish farmer group, then used as a loan scheme by the group administrators to group members under mutually agreed regulation. The rule for playing loan funds are quite effective in changing the, the intention of program participants from receiving financial assistance to borrowing business fund. This rule also include reward and punishment for participant or group member relate and relate to loans. So member who can return, return the loan after harvest and sell the result are given a large loan reward. And member who do not return the loan are given punishment in the form of not being given another loan until they are able to repay the loan. In our sea farming program, the loan are provided in the form of production input, namely seed and feed, not in the form of money. The borrowed seed come from the sea farming centers are larger, large, larger size and superior. So they have a higher, higher chance of rich market size and harvest. The seeds are imported from outside of the area of Seribu Island and reared first by the best technology in sea farming centers until it reaches the, the safe size for the program participant. The loan of large size and adapted seed guarantees the success of the program rather than in the term of money. Commonly based of our experience, based on our experience, the loan in the form of money have a potential for misuse of this capital if they are not used properly. The sea farming program can increase the production and value of global fish production in the Seribu Island. This group so that so the trend of increasing production and value of proper fish production after the sea farming program was launched in 2005. The application of technology 4.0 in sea farming program must be implemented for better productivity, efficiency, and uh, sustainability. Uh, thanks for your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you very much, Pak Irzal, uh, FND, uh, for the introduction, introduction of the sea farming program in our, in our uh, island, one of the Seribu Island. And in the, in the process, I think the sea farming also now uh, applying the, uh, what we call the uh, 4.0 uh, technology. And for the second uh, plen plenary session, I would like to mentioned also by Indra Jaya and uh, team also will improve that the sea farming program in our IPP university, not only uh, employing the aquaculture technology uh, only, but also uh, putting some ideas and uh, innovation on uh, information technology, uh, artificial intelligence, and perhaps some, some sensoric uh, uh, technology that also can improve the uh, effectivity and efficiency of the uh, mariculture under the sea farming program. But yes, that sea farming is not only aquaculture, it's not only technology, but also the community development. That's why that Pak Irizal mentioned about the also the benefit of the sea farming uh, in the context of the community perspective. Uh, thank you very much, Pak uh, Irizal, for uh, introducing the sea farming to us. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, the distinguished participant of this webinar, I would like to come to the very quick uh, discussion because the time is very limited for us. Uh, I, I don't have any ideas in the context of written question in the chat room. So I would like to invite if you have a question to Pak Irza, uh, because for the Pak Kim uh, is very uh, I would like to apologize for that because Pak Kim has another 
meeting uh, af uh, during this uh, afternoon webinar. So if you have a question to him, uh, uh, send to us and then we will send to Pak Kim. But if you have a question to Pak Irsa Evendi, uh, I think we have still uh, uh, 10 minutes uh, perhaps to, to do that. Uh, please raise your hand and then uh, directly you can just open your mic and give question to Pak Irsa, if any. Participants. No? Okay. Okay. <laughs> no question, Pak Irzal. Uh, maybe uh, the question will be on private uh, after this. <laughs> okay. Uh, by, by that, uh, I'd like to close the first plenary session uh, introducing the uh, development of aquaculture in Korea by Pak Kim, Dr. Kim and the uh, introducing of the sea farming program in uh, Sribu Island by Pak Irzal. But I think uh, I would like to close this uh, first plenary session with the very uh, optimistic uh, collaboration between Korea and Indonesia, since that we, have, uh, we do have a same passion on how to develop our ocean area to, uh, to, uh, to be used to improve our uh, national uh, welfare and I very uh, agree with Pa Kim for example with the terms of key food yeah K food yeah uh, it's not only export the K-pop to Indonesia but also K food to the all of the countries and and I do hope that millennial in Indonesia also love K aquaculture or K fish meaning that uh, the millennial is not just only love the K-pop but also the K aquaculture the K fish the K technology and then we can share with Indonesia to be like KI fish uh, uh, delivered to all of the country uh, through our collaboration, putting the uh, aquaculture as the locomotive of our economic development in the future. And I, I think this plenary session is not the end of the process, but just only the beginning as Dr. Hansan Park and Dr. Kim mentioned also Pak Ahmad Mulyanda as well as Pak Dedin, uh, Pak Ferdinand Yulianda, that this is the starting point to have more fruitful collaboration between Indonesia and Korea, uh, start with ITB, ITB, MTRC, and the other universities. And I believe Pak uh, Hansan, uh, don't worry that we, we have also uh, many universities that also have capacity on agriculture, as well as the research institute under the Ministry of uh, Business and Marine Affairs or under BRIN that maybe uh, as also the strong uh, strategic collaborator to, uh, between uh, two countries. Uh, by saying that, I would like to uh, 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 express grateful thanks to Dr. Kim and Dr. Irisa Effendi to deliver the, for the delivering the presentation. And I uh, uh, give back to Ibu Sinto. But before that, uh, let's have a virtual applause to Dr. Kim and Dr. Irisa Effendi. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much for the giving the opportunity, uh, the director of the center, Dr. Jan Fitner, to me to uh, lead the first uh, plenary session. Mbak Sinto, I will take the time to you. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Luki Ardianto, for hosting our uh, first uh, panel presentation. Uh, okay, so the before uh, uh, getting to the second panel presentation, the committee uh, would like to ask uh, Pak Hansan. Pak Hansan, are you still there? Okay, Pak Hansan, uh, would you please uh, convey our our gratitude to uh, the speakers for the first uh, panel presentation by. Uh, giving away the uh, certificate of appreciation okay uh, just uh, wait for a while while the committee will uh, uh, prepare the uh, certificate okay so Pansan, would you please uh, uh, present the certificate for uh, Pa Kim and also for Pa Irza Effendi and also Pa Luki as the moderator would you please Pa Hansan 
Yep. Yep. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you for a very good presentation uh, for this seminar. Uh, and I would like to uh, hand over this subject to uh, Dr. Kim Shin Gwan uh, in Korea uh, uh, Institute of Fishery Science. Uh, thank you. And for also uh, Association Professor, Professor Dr. Elizar uh, FND. And thank you for your presentation, especially I'm very interested with the and Sriba and uh, yeah, a research and center in Ipebe. And yep, I just, I'm very glad to hand over this certificate to you. Thank you very much. The last one, Pa Hansan for the moderator for Pa Luki Adrianto. Yep, uh, actually, uh, Ruki, yeah, it's very nice to meet you too again. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, well, we we met. Uh, yeah, maybe yeah. ten about ten years before. Ten years ago, you still yeah. young, and yeah. I'm getting old. I think. Yeah. Right? Dr. Guan, we <laughs> did Dr. Guan. Yeah. So yeah, he he want us and he's a warm greeting to you. So thank yeah. you, thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, I'm very, yeah, thank you for your nice moderator and also summarize where well, also uh, explain the background of a cooperation and also mention for future plan. And also I bet uh, I will, uh, uh, truly agree with your opinion. And I also hope we can have a good cooperation yeah. with the two countries. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Fahan San part. Okay, so we are at the end we already um, get to our second panel presentation. Uh, I would like to invite the associate, uh, associate professor, Dr. Ario Damar to uh, host the presentation as well as our uh, previous moderator, Pa Luki. Pa Ario Damar is also our uh, former uh, head of uh, Center for Coastal and Marine Resources Studies. So Pa Ario Damar, the presentation session is yours. So thank you very much, uh, Shinto. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So it is uh, a very nice and honor to ask to be a moderator of this uh, seminar and the honorable, the deputy of uh, Kemen Kumar, director of IPB, the dean of Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Sciences, IPB, and then the director of PKSPL IPB, and then my uh, colleague, Dr. Hansan Park, co-director of MTCRC, and then also my colleague, uh, Dr. Iphone Rajawane from IPB, from MTRSC Indonesia as well, and then our colleagues from Korea, Dr. Kim Sikwon and Dr. Chung Kyu Jeon, and also our pitch from Indonesia and all participants. So Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. Now, because this time limitation, so I would like now to introduce the next research persons for this second session of today workshop. And the topic of this second uh, workshop is the application of digital technology in the field of marine aquaculture. So we would like to hear from two research person. First is Dr. Sung Pyo Hur from Korea and Dr. Uh, and Professor Indrajaya from uh, IPB. So uh, both of you, I think in total we have 30 minutes for twice, uh, two times of presentation, meaning that each person will be have only 15 minutes. And the first turn, I think we would like to invite uh, Dr. Sung Hyo Hur. So Dr. Sung Hyo Hur is a senior research scientist from Jeju Research Institute 
the Korean Institute of Ocean Science and Technology, or KIOS. So uh, Dr. Sung Kyo Hyo is got his PhD from the University of Ryukyu, Japan, in the field of chemistry, biology, and marine sciences in uh, 2012, I think. And then he got his master degree from Jeju National University and also his bachelor degree, uh, he got it from Jeju National University in the marine life science in Korea. And without any uh, further ado, I would like to give the next 15 minutes to kindly ask Dr. Sung Pyo Hur to deliver your presentation is about the application of digital technology on mariculture practices in Korea. So, Dr. Hu, the time is yours. Dr. Hood, are you there? Yes, please wait for a moment. We have a technical issue, so we are trying okay. to play the video. No problem, take your time. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to give a presentation. My name is Song Pyo Ho. My current position is Senior Scientist in Kyoto and Associate Professor in UST. Today, I will present about the status of the Korean aquaculture industry and present the research being conducted at Kyoto. First, I will briefly explain the history of aquaculture industry in South Korea. The history of South Korea aquaculture industry can be divided into six stages. Since oyster aquaculture was successful in 1922 in South Korea starting on the national aquaculture industry, by the 1970s, the oyster aquaculture was stabilized and invertebrate aquaculture began with abalone and sea squat. After the 1980s, aquaculture industry in South Korea developed rapidly. The aquaculture industry has been activated with the development of its technology since 1985. And new species have been developed to overcome the limitation of the existing technology since 1990s. After the 
year 2000, various approaches enabled this industry to reach its turning point. This slide shows net production of the cultured marine pinfish species in 2020. The production value of the founder and its economic value has dominated more than half of the total production. The founder aquaculture began in 1985 when artificial sea production succeeded, and the production volume of founder has been increased ever since. After successful seeding production of olive flounder, it was industrialized and with continuous research and investment. It is now possible to have all year round production. However, the technology developed at the time has not made much progress until now. However, after the mass production system was established, many people started investing in aquaculture industry due to its high profitability. In addition, also we have the past 20 years since the start of our aquaculture industry, still we are experiencing many difficulties, such as less awareness and treatment protocols, and market behavior and consumer performance, and changes occurred in marine environment due to farm effluent. In order to solve this, this problem, Various attempts are being made to apply, not only for brown aquaculture, but also for the land-based aquaculture, which target other fish species and the entire fish industry. The collectively, the fish farming industry has been developed around for 30 years, and many improvement attempts have been made, but the development requirements are constantly changing with time. Some recent technology advancements of aquaculture and fisheries industry have made intensified changes. Not only the aquaculture industry, but also may industry used word as MART smart a lot. In the Korean industrial field, smart refer to a technology that combine Com combined IoT, ICT, big data, and drone technology. Finally, the smart aquaculture culture industry is also aiming to increase the maximum production efficiency by using these technologies. In addition, we are actively trying to develop eco-friendly aquaculture technology through the fusion of the optical technology optical technology and biology and electronic engineering to improve and productivity and reduce use of feed and reduce the use of antibiotics. Based on the research results conducted in laboratory for several years, maritime and fishery related policy making organizations have been distribu distributing technologies that can be applied to the practical use in the field. The smart farm concept is divided into four stages as follows. The difference between each step is depends on the how much its manpower is consumed. These are some videos taken by drones that are currently in operation. As drones have become popular for several years, nowadays they are being used in the aquaculture industry as well. However, up to now, the hardware part of the aquaculture industry in Korea is lacking. Similarly, the current drone have to be operated manually. So it is expected that they will operate more efficiently if AI function is installed. From this slide, I will briefly tell you about the research related to the aquaculture industry that KIOST is conducting. Our team research on the fish endocrine system and applying that research results to the aquaculture industry. In addition, we studied the relationship between fish physiology and climate change by conducting joint research with several Asian countries. Lastly, we are conducting the research on improving 
the productivity of the aquaculture industry through the convergence of the engineering technology and aquaculture technology. Among them, I would like to introduce a topic related to the aquaculture industry. The many aquaculture companies are making many attempts to lower the production cost and increase the high quality harvest. In order to increase the productivity more efficiently in aquaculture industry, QC is conducting research and commercializing of LED light source to promote the fish growth and control the early sexual maturation. In addition, we are developing and distributing a real-time breeding information inspection system using the smartphone to make farm management process more efficient. In this study conducted by Kyost, the 540 nanometer green LED promotes the growth of ground by 80% or around two times compared to control during the one year and also increase the resistance to disease, which significantly reduce the mortality of the flounder. In particular, field scale studies have significantly improved the fish well-being by boosting the immune system and increasing growth rate and reducing stress. The amount of the antibiotic used by the aqua farm and the amount of feed supplies has been reduced. This is expected to have an impact on the development of aquaculture industry because it can lower the production cost and lower the amount of emission result. This project was conducted to the collect individual images and video data of swimming behavior, disease, and abnormal behaviors of common fish species used in aquaculture industry in South Korea. The collected images are refined and processes for AI to recognize. This screen shows the process of acquiring images to identify the abnormal behaviors of farmed fish. We provide guidelines for anomalous behavior and AI classified anomalous behavior according to the guidelines. Using this, AI classified to behavior as abnormal then it provides a service that can detect the condition of breeding tanks or early sign of spread of disease. And this is, is how an AI service model is created through the above the mentioned process. In this sense, the size of the fish, the classification of the fish species, and the recognition of each individual are performed. We are also working on enabling AI to automatically detect the disease by recognizing not only the size of the fish, but also external wounds. In addition, through the AI running data cons construction project, if AI can detect the fish disease information and abnormal behavior early and deliver the information to the manager, it is expected to be a great help in managing aquaculture organism. To practically imply this concept on industry, the first priority should be AI technology. However, for the development of the AI technology, collecting big data should be top priority. And it takes a lot of time. In South Korea, we recognize the importance of big data project for the aquaculture and as well as applying it to all fishery field. In the next two few decades, new technology may be developed that we do not even think of now and we may have to try new things. However, I think it is certain that the present attempts will lead to the future industries. However, it is not possible to predict with certainty what problem will arise in the aquaculture industry due to change in the global environment. 
the accumulated information and experience will be the driving force to solve this problem. Recently, in South Korea, there is a lot of interest in the irregular demand for aquatic products, such as coal and the waste of the seafood thrown away due to overproduction. Among this problem, fish waste is a major problem. For all segments of supply chain, also there are variations from the country to country. On average, about 35% of seafood is thrown away. As a result, countries around the world are considering methods to utilize these waste fishery products that are being thrown away. As a result of research conducted by Kyoto Seju Research Institute, it is determined that about 21% of the total fishery by products that are thrown away can be replaced with fish meal. In addition, we are carrying out research to develop technology that can be used as nutritional supplements such as fish collagen. So, very impressive. So, I think uh, Dr. Ho has already shared how the uh, big data and IT things, digital technology has been incorporated in the activity of marine aquaculture in Korea. We have already seen as well from the video that uh, uh, shared, so recorded, and how this IT technology able to improve such uh, production of fish, and also at the same time, this can be uh, improving the effectivity and in efficiency of the uh, economic sector of the process of this marine aquaculture. And also the most important thing is I believe that by applying this uh, big uh, data and IT technology related aspect, into the marine aquaculture uh, activities, it can be also reduce uh, some byproducts of aquaculture, including the waste disposal that usually uh, produce or dispose by the activity of marine aquaculture. So by having the efficiency process, so it will be able to reduce the volume of some uh, process and waste is also uh, disposed directly into the ocean environment. It is very important as well, uh, uh, providing some uh, environmental friendly aquaculture activity. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for Dr. Gur for the share of the application of uh, big data and IT related uh, activities in uh, marine aquaculture in Korea. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to turn into our second uh, uh, second speakers, and the speaker the, the the topic will be delivered by Professor Indrajaya. So, Professor Indrajaya is professor in marine science and technology in the Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Sciences, uh, IPB University. So, he got his PhD in marine acoustic in the University of Delaware in USA. So the title of his uh, uh, speech is about research and development plans for application of digital technology in mariculture in Indonesia. And uh, for, for this, in the next 15 minutes, I would like to ask, kindly ask Professor Indrajaya to deliver your speech. Thank you. Please, time is yours, Prof. Professor Indrajaya, are you here? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Pa Ario, for uh, introducing me. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, allow me to share my uh, presentation first.
Can you see it, Al? Are you? Not yet? Yes, we can see, but uh, uh, can you make it in the slideshow form? Yes. Is it on? Yeah. Yeah. All excellent. right. Uh, again, uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, you know still staying in this uh, webinar. Uh, as mentioned by Pak Aryo, uh, my presentation uh, titles for this evening is a Research and Development Plan for Application of Digital Technology in Mariculture. Uh, we have heard uh, from uh, the starting of this webinar about uh, Maricultures, yeah, and I think I will not. Uh, maybe I'm not uh, going to repeat that. So I will uh, give you sort of like a summary uh, about uh, what we are facing in the marine uh, mariculture. Yeah. This is end-to-end uh, -end, uh, mariculture production system. So if uh, given we have these natural resources and all the infrastructure. And, uh, and the science and technology available to us, we can start uh, our mariculture production system uh, early on from the site selection. Yeah, let me hear. Uh, from site selection, and then the construction of uh, cage culture, and then uh, we will uh, start uh, preparing uh, the seed and have some uh, feeding management system in place. Uh, after that, we will go through the uh, water quality management, uh, health management, uh, until we are uh, really going to ready for harvesting. But before that, we will do maybe sa some sampling, but it is uh, really about time to uh, uh, harvest. So <clears throat> this is very much uh, the process. And from this node, yeah, from this uh, uh, process after another, one process after another, uh, we can uh, have a digital system basically in, in place. And below here, I, will, I gave you uh, the <coughs> uh, instrumentation system that uh, people have used. Uh, especially in my culture. Uh, for example, for, for the site selection, we can use a drone. I think it's uh, illustrated uh, earlier, uh, the use of drone uh, to select a site, and then we check the water quality and maybe also the oceanographic parameter. Yeah, and in, the, in construction of uh, a pond also, uh, construction of a cage also, like that, um, we have this, uh, Underwater robot that uh, could uh, see whether we are uh, doing it uh, right already, and also uh, when the production is uh, ongoing, we can clean up uh, our cages. So all, all this uh, instrumentation now is uh, available, and if not, we need uh, to develop it ourselves. So we need what we are doing here is to develop uh, first. Uh, the system to be fully in instrumented and then uh, integrated as one uh, uh, system. Once it's integrated, then we can improve further to become uh, automatized or automated uh, system. Uh, this is how uh, we uh, view the smart uh, aquaculture systems. Once all these system, one all these uh, 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 instrumentation are in place. Now, once we have the instrumentation in place, uh, we will get uh, data, of course, yeah. Uh, we will get uh, our data uh, for all this. And the next step, of course, is uh, to, to be able to make some kind of a diagnostic or, or monitoring system from this data, uh, whether, for example, our uh, dissolved oxygen it's in the uh, lower uh, value that we need to pump up uh, the oxygen. Yeah? Or maybe we can do some later on once we fully uh, be able to monitor, then we can move uh, forward uh, to a prediction or forecasting. Pro prediction or forecasting, uh, what will happen in the next uh, hours or maybe 24 hours, depends on how good we are. You know? And then the uh, prescription, you know. Uh, or optimization uh, process that we can uh, conduct. 
So uh, I'm going to illustrate maybe some of this, uh, maybe uh, two or three, uh, about this digitalization of uh, each of this uh, uh, product, uh, process yeah, in, in the production system. Okay, uh, for example, if, when we come up with, uh, when we start with the site selection, for example, as I mentioned, uh, we can use a drone. Uh, uh, in this case, for example, we can use uh, a surface, autonomous surface vehicles to uh, get information on the bottom condition of our uh, potential site, for example, here. Uh, we can use that. Uh, 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 we can use that, uh, for example, this potential site uh, directly, uh, whether we can transmit the information to the land or we can uh, uh, store it for, the beginning for uh, later uh, analysis. Yeah, so that, that kind of things here. And as you see here, when we look, when we work in the, uh, at sea, uh, the images are not very pretty. They are, there are uh, a lot of uh, sedimentation. Yeah, uh, it, it, you need to uh, further uh, process the images first before we uh, do something else. Yeah. So this is what we are done so far. For example, here. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, okay. This is yeah. This is what we are done so far. For example, how we can use uh, uh, dehazing technique. For example, yeah. This is the original uh, uh, images that we obtained from that uh, vehicles, from that autonomous vehicles. And after the haze, you can see this how clear uh, they are. They are much more better. Yeah? You can see it. the improvement are very uh, significant. Yeah? This is uh, uh, the bottom with uh, seagrass, for example, like that. And this is some kind of uh, you know, uh, rubble or uh, piece of uh, a coral. Yeah? Now, with the dehazing, we can uh, have this more uh, clear. Once we have that clear uh, dehazing, uh, we can also further uh, process the data, data using AI. Yeah, I also mentioned in uh, early speaker, we can uh, compute, uh, for example, the coverage of this uh, area, how much actually the seagrass is there or uh, the rubbles and everything. Then, then based on this, we can uh, decide whether this is the right uh, site for our uh, mariculture. So that uh, very much uh, what it is, yeah. Uh, next, uh, I think the illustration of uh, once we have the site and then maybe we, have, we construct the uh, uh, cages and with some feed. And at, at the end, once we grow this fish, uh, sometimes we are facing with uh, a disease, yeah. Sometimes we have a disease. And uh, the most common disease in, in Indonesia, for example, in Indonesia is a white spot disease. So you can see this, uh, you know, in, in each of these species, there is a small uh, dot like here uh, with a, a white color. That's why they call it a white spot disease. Now, how we, uh, uh, how we detect and how we uh, compute, you know, how much, uh, how widespread these diseases are. So that's also important. So we can do something about it. Now we can take the pictures and uh, start, uh, uh, you know, uh, using our underwater, uh, using our uh, underwater tel television system, for example. Then we can uh, uh, process that with the help of uh, artificial intelligence. We can try to see uh, how spread this uh, disease are already uh, occurred in our uh, fish. Yeah. So using, for example, uh, this. Uh, uh, neural net, yeah, neural net uh, uh, algorithm. We can uh, compute uh, this uh, uh, the spread of the uh, this uh, white white spot disease. Okay, uh, so, so this is just an algorithm that you can see here. Now you can start see this is uh, how we isolate this uh, white spot disease, and then we can we can come up with you know this. Uh, pictures in each of that uh, 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 state of the of the algorithm. So we, we can see, you know, uh, where, where they are, you know, where these white spots are, and you know, we can ca ca calculate later how how uh, severely 
the condition. So we can make uh, our decision. So that's uh, very much uh, uh, what we will do in, in uh, our multicultural uh, system. Uh, so next, uh, what will, will be our plan? Uh, what will be our plan? We have uh, uh, a site that, uh, that I think uh, is already described uh, by Dr. Irsal. So our approach will be uh, like this. We have uh, the instrument here. Uh, our main instrument is an underwater televisual system. We would like to observe uh, how the fish are growing. And also we need uh, support from, uh, you know, uh, we need to know the uh, environmental condition, the ocean, uh, you know, uh, how they are, and also the, the water quality. And then uh, uh, we need maybe to have uh, for uh, fish management, we have this automatic uh, feeder. When we going, when are we going to feed the fish and how much, yeah, for example. So uh, in, us, in, in each state of this here, for example, uh, we can have uh, a, a project in each of this and then uh, let our student work uh, for it. Yeah, this, for example, here for a master, maybe they are uh, trying to uh, fine tune uh, the behaves uh, algorithm. So it will be uh, clear uh, when we are uh, uh, trying to identify or when we miss, we want to measure uh, our fish, for example, it is much more clear, so it's less uh, error. Yeah. So uh, we have all these here, right? both also not only for master, but also, also for a PhD, which require more uh, integrated uh, research. So if we uh, simplify, this is how we are approaching this uh, a plan for for our uh, mariculture. Uh, the first one, we need to develop this, yeah, a uh, system that uh, really effective for uh, capturing uh, the images under the water. And of course, what we are meaning here, including, as I mentioned earlier, the technology of processing the images, yeah. And then the next, we need to identify and quantify life piece inside the cages, yeah, uh, in terms of maybe the uh, behavior and health and also later on to estimate their fish size, whether they are growing uh, in a normal condition or maybe they're going faster or maybe they're slower, we don't know. So that's what we need to observe. And then we develop a, a weeding decision system uh, when to feed the fish. Uh, overall, uh, the, the goal is that we need to, uh, hopefully we can estimate the production performance of uh, the fish, yeah? Yeah, as I say, the fish uh, growth as a function of maybe time and feed, and also the rate of uh, growth. So that's the, the current plan. Uh, and then this is, I think, uh, mentioned by all uh, uh, the location this is in Jakarta Bay. So it's quite uh, um, uh, easier uh, to, uh, it's quite easy to access uh, from uh, Bogor and also from Bandung. Probably, yeah. A friend from Bandung, or it's easier to access uh, this area. It's not very far from uh, the uh, capitals of this uh, district yeah, in Kepulauan Seribu, in Pulau Pramuka. It's about only you know a couple of minutes we can reach this uh, area, and it's it's quite uh, uh, expansive. It's just, uh, area, and we can do a lot of things in there. And this is, for example, the, the cages that uh, happen in in, in, uh, in the location, and this is our uh, our system here to uh, monitor the uh, the fish in the cages, and we have developed our own uh, underwater televisual system for that. And for example, we can uh, deploy them uh, in cages and and observing them. And uh, for example, we have here uh, uh, in, in the cages uh, a stream, yeah, uh, a stream. We can later on, you know, identify the length for each of the stream. Uh, you can, you know, the stream with a different size. Uh, we will be able to know uh, later on uh, whether their growth uh, are good or not. Now, the research question is, I think it's very straightforward. 
Yeah, because uh, this is challenging. Uh, 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 sorry. Uh, for example, yeah, uh, first, how to develop an effective underwater monitoring system, uh, and then uh, how to develop identification, quantification, and classification model uh, for live fish in cages, culture, and maybe the last one, how to better estimate fish biomass or abundance. But, you know, sometimes uh, it looks easy, but when you are working in a live uh, fish situation, even the length, you know, is changing. You know, it de depends on how they, whether the fish is facing your camera out there going away or just uh, passing by. So which which length, yeah, you, then you, this is uh, not easy to uh, uh, work on. Also about the health, whether they are swimming in a normal uh, speed or they when they are going faster or, or they are maybe a little bit subdued, a little bit slower than, than the situation. Okay, uh, my final remarks is only have the 15 minutes. So uh, the education research program in sea farming uh, open up an opportunity for students to learn and to apply digital technology in pariculture. We are, since we are uh, uh, educational uh, institution, so we need to uh, put emphasis on this education and research. Yeah. Also, not only just research, but also in education. This is the place for students also to learn. Uh, also, an opportunity for research and development on smart precision because uh, we are actually relatively new on this field for the smart uh, precision of maliculture. And this is our uh, opportunity for uh, uh, development of this system. And the last one, I think this is uh, very important for maybe for uh, PKSPL and MTRC uh, to develop, uh, to foster uh, a collaboration among researchers, yeah, from multi and interdisciplinary field uh, to increase productivity and to ensure sustainability, mariculture practices. I think that's all my uh, presentation, uh, Dr. Aryo. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Indrajaya. Very impressive presentation. So, ladies and gentlemen, now we come into a Q&A session. And I think also we still have uh, Dr. Irzal Evendi here uh, around with us. So if maybe there are some questions that related the development and application of this IT technology in the real uh, mariculture practices, then we could raise the question. And Professor Indrajaya, as uh, I would say, is an engineer. So he already uh, has been conducting some research related to the IT base and big data uh, development. But so far, if we compare to what has been done in, in uh, Korea, for example, so uh, correct if I'm wrong, so, but uh, I, I would say that our stage now so far is uh, not as far as uh, our colleagues from Korea that's uh, achieved. So they have already implementing uh, this technology in the real production of fish on the field. And we have already done that, but maybe in some, uh, some, some uh, remark uh, situation and condition. So anyway, I would like to invite some questions or comment related to uh, our two research person for the second uh, session of discussion. So uh, I, I don't know whether Dr. Hur is available to answer or respond question, if any question for him. Uh, but Professor Indrajaya for sure, he will be here and ready to answer and respond to some comments. And Dr. Irzal Evendi is also here. And uh, the first uh, 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 research person from the first uh, session, uh, I believe uh, you will be able to, end, to respond some question, if any. Please, I would like to invite some comment. I don't see any rising hand and I don't see any question written in the chat. So if you have some question, please welcome. Ah, Dr. Pa, please. 
Yep, thank you. And thank you for a very nice presentation. Actually, uh, just uh, in my presentation also, I mentioned we, uh, we want to make a follow project. I mean, a specific cooperative project on the sea farming, especially about the smart aquaculture. So uh, Professor uh, Indra Jaya, uh, he, his presentation is very impressive. Uh, already he uh, applied to AI technology to smart aquaculture and also have a, a more uh, specific uh, roadmap. And, uh, but uh, I, I wonder, uh, actually when we apply to smarter things to uh, aquaculture and there will be uh, several steps. So first step will be just, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, monitoring and recognizing something object uh, on the sea using video or, uh, but uh, I think how about the, about sensing technology? I mean, uh, sense for uh, environmental parameter, including, yeah, of course, temperature, serenity, MPH, and DO, many parameters will be uh, used for aquaculture. So uh, it should be uh, monitored uh, in real time and also store and also analyze for more productivity in uh, aquaculture. So how about the status of uh, Indonesia? Indonesia is the uh, 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 smart aquaculture technology already uh, done for that kind of just uh, environmental monitoring uh, using many sensors and also storing data, something right. I want to know that uh, status. Okay, thank you, Dr. Park. So I think it's quite clear the question, Pak Indra. Yeah. Is yeah, I, I think so. uh, uh, the, the status of that uh, technology, you know, we, we uh, develop our own uh, very much a uh, system. Uh, we imported mostly the, the sensor because we don't have that uh, uh, technology uh, yet. So we, we uh, for example, we uh, imported the, the sensor and then uh, we de developed the, the uh, electronic uh, circuit for that to read uh, what you know the sensor outputs and then uh, process the signals and and then display the result uh, i yesterday i just come back uh, from uh, banten for example we uh, deploy uh, 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 an instrument to measure a, a wave to measure a wave uh, we develop a two system basically one is a, a logger it's a data logger and one for the real time uh, observation. So we uh, use uh, a very uh, a simple uh, GSM technology to transmit uh, this uh, information uh, to us uh, directly. So it will be a real time. So we, we are now uh, have that two system. And not only way, we also have the, uh, for example, uh, a wind, uh, of course, sea surface uh, temperature. Uh, it, so we are very much actually uh, ma mastering that uh, technology. So when we uh, later on uh, plan this, this is a uh, start this uh, semester uh, where we are going to uh, develop our, our uh, mariculture in the uh, Pulauan Seribu, we certainly uh, also incorporate that uh, kind of uh, observation. So uh, as you see, this is not only uh, monitoring, but uh, as I say, uh, we have this also capability of uh, making a, a prediction, as I say, as I illustrated. Uh, we have, for example, the time series is just a matter. We have a time series, then we can uh, make a, a prediction uh, of, the, uh, of the parameters that we are uh, observing. Uh, I hope I answer your question, uh, yeah. uh, Dr. Hansen. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you for your answer. Yeah, can I continue my question? Yes, yes please. Uh, sure, yes. sure. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, uh, how about in, uh, in, what can I say, industry side, I mean, actual aquaculture, there is some kind of sensors to measure uh, ocean parameters, including pH, uh, yeah. temperature, yeah, something right. Is it already applied to industri industries sector in uh, sea farming in, 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 in your on, on the sea 
So that is my actual question. Yeah. Oh, that's actually ah. that's actually your question about the industry. Whether the industry uh, available to uh, support uh, this uh, uh, instrumentation? Uh, I I will say uh, most of the instrumentation is still uh, if we produce it inside of the country is still very much in, in the early stage. So most of the sensing, uh, most of the sensor are uh, imported, yeah, imported from, from outside, uh, especially from uh, China, and that uh, you know uh, provide a cheaper uh, uh, sensor and cheaper uh, technology. Uh, I haven't seen yet, uh, for example, uh, a product from uh, Korea. Maybe if you can provide like a, a cheaper sensor, better than and uh, better quality than China, maybe I think Indonesia will consider <laughs> that. But certainly the sensor technology is not yet, I, I, I honestly say that it's still beyond our, uh, our uh, capability. Yeah. Okay, thank what you. What about that, Dr. Park? Yeah. Thank you. So maybe another uh, continuing question arisen by Dr. Park is for myself. Maybe one question is, uh, Professor Indrajaya or Pak Irzal, could you explain how far our aquaculture industry has been implementing this such technology, like uh, what has been shown by the presentation, the first Dr. Hur in Korea? Maybe Pak Indra? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. My, uh, maybe by yourself have a better uh, information on that how how uh, intensive this uh, uh, technology been applied in uh, mariculture. But uh, I, I don't see uh, much yet uh, action in in, uh, in terms of mariculture. A lot in brackish brackish uh, water aquaculture. Has a brackish aquaculture, which is you know uh, basically grows a shrimp, which is uh, has a very uh, good uh, economic value. Then uh, the the technology is much more uh, uh, wider yeah, applied in in, in that uh, uh, type of aquaculture. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Shrimp, for shrimp, shrimp aquaculture. Yeah. Yeah. But not not in a marine. Marine is a, it's very very marine mostly uh, very tra very traditional. Yeah. Still very yeah. traditional, yeah. Not traditional, I think it's conventional, yeah. Yeah, so, conventional, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, Dr. Park, you could see that uh, we need uh, further cooperation with uh, MTRCRC for conducting a joint research, I believe. So, it is very important for the development of uh, IT based technology applied application in Indonesian agriculture uh, sector. So we are inviting uh, MTCRC to have a real uh, joint research with us, I think with IPB. So we could start it uh, soon with our uh, project in sea farming. And of course, it is, will be very beneficial for both of us. So I would like to invite another comment or question. I show some rising hand from, I think Mr. Mr. Fatahila, but now the rising hand is gone. So I, I don't know. Is there any more question? So Pak Fatahila, tadi Bapak nanya, mengangkat tangan, apakah ada yang ingin ditanyakan? Oh, tidak rupanya ya. Oke, okay, another rising hand we are looking for, for any question or comments addressed to prof indrajaya and also you could you could ask a question also to pak hansan pak actually uh, related to the future cooperation between uh, korea and indonesia in the field of marine aquaculture actually ah pak safri so uh, uh, okay our boss how are you boss <laughs> Thank you, bye, boss, Padamar. <laughs> Please, uh, it's okay. very, very honored to be here, Pastor Safri. Please, thank you, yes. Padamar. This it's exciting for me because 
since I become the what's called the chairman for the advisory for the MTRC with the other our friend. It's interesting now because MTRC we invite to develop our especially in oceanographic resource and then uh, how to prepare the mariculture based on scientific base. What this means scientific base because we have so so a huge area, but we have not really the the the, the complete data database how to uh, to provide the mariculture and aquacultures. Since the, the the last time, the two three weeks ago, the the, the minister of uh, Korean Ocean Ocean and Fisheries and uh, Palut uh, meet in, in Jakarta, so Palut uh, invite the Korean to join to prepare the the research in, in mariculture. Especially we, we started from the, the simple one, what we call it for the seaweed. Because if we can make the seaweed, it become the industrial stage, it's become to uh, enhancing or the how to alleviate the property in Indonesia. Because most of the areas in Indonesia, the, the, the property is very high. So we asked and then we are ready, MPRC ready for the next week, started to make the uh, study, especially in uh, along the coastal of the Cage Islands, uh, Maluku Tenggara, of course, and then we study based on this one. We will study by say, by uh, remote sensing, by uh, oceanographic data, and other other uh, data with what we need. And based on this one, we want to make sure the aquaculture of the seaweed, the medical seaweed, is based on scientific, not just traditional one, but we want to make scientific method to make sure then and the and the most important how to increase the price so also the the end of the result of the seaweed because normally we just the the people the fishermen or the farmer of aquaculture just sell the product in the dry one so we want to make the the product not just dry one but we want to make the high quality in high quality well, we, we need a scientific based approach this is important we so why we asked the from the Korean side and Indonesian side how we how if we can get to working together, how to improve the seaweed quality in Indonesia. And we understand most of the Indonesian, uh, the best, uh, what's called it, formulation for the makeup is coming from the seaweed. So, so this, this is important. Now, Indonesia is very famous for the number one the seaweed production. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy because IPB now to, to become the leader for this one. So we want to make sure that in the, in the, in the future, in the, at least, the end of the 2024, something we can produce from the seaweed, especially how to, uh, uh, what's called it, to improve the farmers living uh, in Indonesia. Thank you, Pak Amar. Thank you so much, Pak Safri. So it is very nice to have a direct explanation from the person that who really involved in this uh, cooperation between Indonesia and Korea. And I believe we could contribute more in, in the seaweed uh, enlargement and empowerment and improvement sector that will be done soon. But it, it, is it already uh, started or it, it is just planned, Pa Safri? In case? It is just started. Just started. Okay. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Pa Safri. And another question I would like to invite one more man or question. So, Pak pa Hansan, so in IPB also we have uh, experts on, on seaweed culture, not only how to culture the seaweed, but also some, some, some other processing uh, process of the seaweed. As we know that seaweed is, is, is not only end up in after it is harvested, but of course it is very important if you can proceed it into a processing and then to have added value from this product. So it is very interesting to know that you have a, a future research in, in K Island about the uh, seaweed culture. So I would like to invite more a question or comment. So I see also here our our senior, Prof. Safwan. So you are here also, sir. So it is nice to have you here. So it's been a long time not to see you, Prof. Safwan, Adi. Okay, 
if there is no question, then um, I, w I have to Maybe stop. Maybe Pak pa Safwan will say something about it. So. Okay, Pak Safwan. Invite you to say something. Ah, how are you? I hope you are going well. It's, what, it's nice to meet you, my old friend from Bogor, Pak Indra. No, I'm not old enough. Yeah? <laughs> I'm still too young. <laughs> Ini para suhu sudah turun semua turun gunung semua Suhunya sudah turun gunung. I think it is an opportunity for us to work together in peace farming. And PCRC now is, a, is a, our friend to pursue our collaboration in peace farming and other field in uh, marine sciences. So it is supporting for us together, Bogor and Bandung and Jakarta and other university in Indonesia. That makes the uh, MPCRC as a, as a vehicle for us to pursue, to deepen uh, our research in marine sciences. The, the spirit of collaboration, I think is uh, that need to be uh, meet between us uh, because we have a more expert now. We have a Korean college to help us to improve our technology and research in marine sciences. I believe that uh, using the MTCRC as a vehicle that we can go, go together and grow together uh, in Indonesia and Korea in pursuing high standard of research in marine sciences. So as a, I'm now it's already uh, rather old now, <laughs> so I believe uh, my young college has a more opportunity to, to do a better research in the international standard in marine sciences. I have uh, Pa Indra, Pa Luki, uh, Pa Ayo Damar, and other friends in Bogor. And also we have colleagues in ITB and Korea. So let us uh, work together. Pasha PS and Lidia Rabat, as head of advisory board in MPCRC. Uh, we'll, have, we'll be happy if we get uh, more input, uh, more feedback from us, how to improve our research in marine sciences. That's all my Command Pa Ario and Pa Indra, Pa Ruki, Pa Hansen, Pa Sapri, and my other friends in Bogor. Long time not feel Bogor now. Yeah. More than two. Thank years. you so much, Pa Thank you. Hadi. Thank you. So it's been Thank very you, nice. Pa. Yeah, it's been very nice to hear your supportive uh, words about this cooperation. It's mean a lot to us. Yeah. So we wish that we could able to conduct this uh, cooperation in the future, in the near future. And Pak Luki, perhaps you have some uh, words about the second session. Yeah, I think from the uh, first and second plenary session, Pak Arya, we can some have somehow some connection. Uh, as Pak Anshan also mentioned, Pak Saf, pa Safan, Pak Safi, even though that we have a long time history on aquaculture actually, and including civic culture, but mm -hmm. the, the development itself, the improvement itself is never ending process. So I think with this opportunity, collaboration between Korea and Indonesia, hopefully uh, we we can real, really developing this one because the issues of civic culture is not this today's issues because you know uh, even Pak Safi knows very well we have already the what's that uh, keputusan president on the roadmap of civic culture if uh, civic uh, development uh, uh, indeed so I think uh, that's also part of the uh, backbone to uh, develop this one as the Indonesia can be still considered as the largest producing country of the civic and civic is also part of the five uh, top uh, export commodities uh, of Indonesia, uh, including seaweed, yeah. Uh, the other commodities like uh, shrimps and tuna, uh, seaweed, squid, including the crabs, for example. So I think seaweed uh, 
can be can be part of the uh, strategic commodity what countries yeah because Korea has a very long uh, experience on labor or civic culture as well as the the development of the technology and as I mentioned the cave wood because you know I, I like the lever of Korea but now uh, we speak we can we can develop the uh, K A fish. Maybe you can say Kifis. I think the cute name, right? Kifis. I, I, I like it, the name. I like it, the name. <laughs> so, so it's not K-pop, so that Kifis. Kifis means Korean Indonesian fish. Uh, meaning that from the MCTRC, uh, MTRC, uh, we developed that kind of thing. Kifis is cute enough as the brand. <laughs> Millennial uh, brand name. Thank you, Pak Aryo. No, thank you, Pak Luki. So another suggestion is K seafood. Maybe it's also nice, yeah, K seafood. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time to stop this session because it's, uh, I'm sorry, it's already evening in Korea, I believe in Busan. It's two hours ahead of our time. Okay, so yeah, then thank you so much, Pa Indrajaya and also Dr. Kur and also uh, Pak Safwan, Pak Safri, and Pak Luki, and some other uh, colleagues who has been already uh, sharing their opinion about this, especially the second session. And then I will, I will, I will return the time to. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Pak Damar, for uh, hosting the second uh, pan the panel presentations. So we have been passing through the wonderful, interesting, and uh, fruitful presentations as well as discussions today. So uh, high appreciation for all of the invited speakers, for all the moderators, as well as all the audience. So let's give a big applause for all of us. Okay. So I would like also to invite pa, uh, Dr. Yon Fitner to confer the uh, certificate of appreciation to all the uh, second uh, present, uh, presenters on the panel uh, presentations. So <clears throat> while the committee uh, preparing the certificate for the uh, speakers as well as for the moderator, would you please, pa Yon? uh give the certificate for them okay thank you mbak sinto uh thank you uh very much for the impressive uh presentation uh in the second plenary session uh from uh pak indra jaya professor indra jaya and also uh from Sumpyu Hurt uh, and then uh, attractive uh, moderator, Associate Professor Pa Aryo Damar. Thank you. And then I will deliver the uh, a certificate to the presenter, the priest uh, to the Pa Aryo. I will deliver the certificate uh, as a moderator. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pa Yon. It's thank been a pleasure and very honor to me to be a moderator. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for your uh, participation as moderator in this second session. The next, uh, Pa Indra Jaya. Yeah. Uh, Prof. Indra Jaya, uh, I deliver the uh, e certificate uh, and we will send the email certificate to you. Also, thank you very much for your presentation. It's a nice presentation. I think uh, this is a moment for us to uh, create a more uh, activity and collaboration between MTCRC uh, related with a smart technology in the farming area. Thank you, Pak Indrajaya. And then uh, Pak Hansan, uh, I need your help to represent of, uh, the MTCRC to uh, accept the certificate for Xiong Pio Horn. And, and, and I need your help to send the uh, uh, to, to deliver this. Okay. Thank yes, you. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you very much, Yon uh, Fitness. So we, all, we almost come to an end of this joint uh, webinar. So we would like to, again, invite Pak Yon Fitner to uh, deliver the closing statement. Please, Pak Yon Fitner. Thank you, Bu Sinta. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, distinguished uh, Rector IPB University, Professor Arif Satria, and then Deputy Assistant in Act Culture of Coordinating Ministry of Maritime and Investment, Pak Rahmat Mulyanda, and Co-Coordinator Director of Korea Indonesia, MTCRC Hansan Part, uh, and Dean of Faculty of Series and Marine Science, IPB University, uh, Pak Ferdinand Yulianda, and our speaker from Korea, uh, uh, Dr. Kim, Dr. Pew. And then also from Indonesia, uh, Dr. Irzal and Professor Indrajaya. Thank you. Uh, and then all of the moderator, uh, this uh, I will join webinar, uh, Associate Professor Luke Adrianto and Associate Professor Ario Damar. And all participants, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say thank you for all participants. And we have uh, been involved and join in the international joint webinar between uh, uh, IPB University and MTCRC. Uh, in this event, uh, I will uh, share a little bit information. There are several important things, I think, as conclusion of this uh, joint webinar. The first, uh, I think that Korea is one of the, our strategic partner in the strengthening of research and development of the marine uh, resource and marine technology. And then second, uh, in this moment, uh, IPB, especially to the uh, FPIK, uh, Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science, and also uh, PKSP LPB, uh, I think so we will create a, a roadmap research need and cooperation to improve the better synergy in the future. And then next, uh, I think uh, the smart technology, including smart sea farming and uh, smart aquaculture and other, and other smart uh, technology, and uh, is currently a, uh, an option uh, of a more precise and product uh, productive uh, fisheries uh, business system. And then I think uh, this important thing for us to adopt then the uh, smart technology for our agriculture. Uh, this uh, webinar is uh, the first step for us to strengthening uh, cooperation between Indonesia, between IPB and Korea, and this uh, event is uh, through MTCRC and especially uh, IPB University, we will put our standing in the surf. And then this also as part of our joint program to improve the capacity building in IPB and Korea staff and student. Uh, I think so, not so far from now, uh, we would like to invite the Pak Hansan Park and MTCRC team to come to IPB. We will help the signing uh, memorandum of understanding between IPB and MTCRC uh, to implement our collaboration detail. I think uh, I hope you have uh, uh, agenda in the November maybe. Uh, if you have uh, agenda in November, we can signing the, the the MOU in IPB. And finally, I wish you all a happy joining in the webinar and improve the experience in various ways that have been described by presenters, Prof. Kim, you from Korea, Prof. Irzal, and Prof. Inda from IPB. And that's all my uh, parties. I say thank you uh, very much. Success uh, for you and see you later on the next event that hosts by uh, PKSP LPB joining with the other institution. Uh, faculty of studies and MTSC and the others uh, participant. Thank you very much. Uh, see you later and uh, see you in the next event. Bye bye. Hmm. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Shuri, uh, can I intervention some more? Yeah, yeah. Already we said thank you, but uh, I would like to uh, suggest the additional meeting uh, to develop a proposal for smart agriculture. 
Yeah. Uh, so I will yeah uh, share that, that schedule for that uh, small follow meeting, and yeah. Uh, through yeah back as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, thank you. And Ipu Ipon. Yes. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I yeah. Yes, I thank like you. To, Very yeah. nice present. Uh, nice um webinar. Congratulations for Pak Yon Peter and all uh, Pak Indrajaya, Pak uh, Aryo, Pak Luki, dan teman-teman semuanya. Sama-sama Bu Ivon. Sama-sama. Ya mudah-mudahan sukses Pak ya segera bisa <laughs> direalisasi. Tidak ada, ada, ada wajah hoax. <laughs> Saya di sini Pak. Sudah kelihatan harusnya Pak. Bu Ivon di Cirebon nih. Enggak apa, masih di Bandung saja, Pak. Bandung aja. Oh. <laughs> makasih, Pak Ivan. Ya, makasih. Terima kasih, Pak Ivan. Amin. Mudah-mudahan. Pak Hansan, terima kasih. Pak Safan, thank you, Pak Safan. Ya, ya, thank you, Pak Safan. Terima kasih, ya, puisi-puisinya, Pak Safan. Thank you very much. Andra. Very enjoy ya. reading the poem. Pak Safan, sehat selalu ya. Pak Safri juga. Ya Prof Safri, eh, Pak Safri. Kok oh, nggak ada foto ya? <laughs> Lagi keliling beliau di Pulau K kayaknya. Foto dulu, <laughs> Pak Sinto. Foto dulu. Itu yang ada backgroundnya bagus nih foto sebentar Pak Sinto. Ada Pak Ansan, ada Mbak Ivon, Pak Safan, mungkin. Pak Ansan, we take a photo the moment. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, we're missing yeah, to take a photo together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> please, please, all your faces. Okay. Ibu, okay, so now I'm going to go to Christina. So, Ibu Christina is from ITB as well? No, ITB is our secretary, our uh, director. MTCC manager. 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 Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, Korean, please, yeah, MTCC manager. It's Korean, Pak. Korean, Pak. Yeah, turn on oh, your camera. sorry. I, I thought you were from Bandung. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. 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 Ambil fotonya. Mbak Sinto, ambil. Atau Mas Heru? Okay, Mas Heru, please uh, take the picture. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, for the second page. Okay, once again. Are you ready, Pak Heru? Mas Heru? Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Okay, more pages. Only okay. two pages, right? Only two pages. How many? Oh, pages? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, good. Thank <laughs> you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Yeah, yeah, thank you. Terima kasih. Yeah, thank you, Payo. Yeah, Hamza Ida. Thank you, thank you yeah. Professor Fa. <laughs> yeah, Hamza Ida. Terima kasih kepada semua penitia, ya, yeah. uh, baik IPB maupun MTCRC. Terima kasih. Tetap semangat. Tetap semangat, Mas Aryo. Pak Irni semuanya. Ya, ya, terima kasih banyak Pak Aryo. Terima kasih Pak Aryo, Pak Irni.